The Mountaineers have raised their arms in victory for three straight years. It's playoff time, and that means the parking lots fill up fast as fans come in record numbers to see if Appalachian State can be number one again. In a dizzying display of dominance, Appalachian State has ruled the college football world. Starting in 2005, the Mountaineers began an amazing run against Northern Iowa. Two years ago, UMass was the victim as another trophy was added to the case. Then, last season, App State pulled off the three-peat. Now the quest continues with number four in their sights. Can the Mountaineers climb to the summit again? The trek starts now on the U. You're watching the NCAA Division I Football Championship presented on ESPNU by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We welcome you to Boone, North Carolina and a sold out Kid Brewer Stadium. They're here to watch Appalachian State begin this quest for an unprecedented fourth straight title. And the quest starts today with South Carolina State. Hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with the coach, Larry Coker. And coach, when you were at Miami, you won a national championship your first year. You played for the championship in year number two. You didn't quite get it. Here's App State with three straight. They're trying to get four straight. How do you put that in perspective? Well, I know exactly how difficult that is to, to try to repeat, but to do it four times is just unbelievable. They've been so successful. And a great tribute goes to Jerry Moore and his staff and these players to be able to do the things that they've done. The target's on them. They've handled it very, very well. Well, one of the guys that is targeted for Appalachian State is their quarterback. He is one of the big reasons why they've won three in a row. Armani Edwards is special. Well, the, this is the year of the quarterback in college football, and I think Armani Edwards, especially here at Appalachian State, they think he's a Heisman-type player. 25 touchdown passes, over 2,000 yards passing, nine rushing touchdowns, but only two interceptions. He is truly a great player at any level. Well, see, speaking of great players, let's talk about South Carolina State, and they're led on the ground by a guy named Will Ford, who is a tremendous running back. Well, when I've had the best offenses, it's been with a great running back, and I think Will Ford is that for South Carolina State. He reminds me a lot of uh, 28 I had, a Clinton Portis that's now the star running back for the Washington Redskins. He's got excellent vision, great explosion. He has a little bit of a little bit of a slide step, and then he can really explode and make things happen. Score, scores a lot of touchdowns. So it's the running attack of South Carolina State against the passing spread offense of Appalachian State, a team that has certainly been the Lord of the Rings. Can they win a fourth? That quest it does begin here. It's Appalachian State and South Carolina State next. <laughs> NCAA Division I Football Championship is presented on ESPNU by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. With the coach Larry Coker, I'm Dave Armstrong, and here we are at Appalachian State. Uh, certainly a school that has ruled the college football world with three straight national championships. Can they make it four in a row? That is the big question mark in college football this year. When you look at South Carolina State, Buddy Pugh is their head coach. He's been there seven years now. This is by far their most successful year. In fact, first time they've been to the playoffs since the early 80s. So Buddy Pugh has done an outstanding job with the Bulldogs, and he's got them in position here against Appalachian State. Against the experienced Jerry Moore, who switched over to the spread offense about four years ago. He said that really turned the tide. And look at his overall record here in 20 years at App State, 27 years overall as a coach. Uh, 20 years at App State, any one place for a college football coach, that's a great, great tribute. Jerry Moore was a power running attack at Nebraska, an assistant there, head coach at North Texas and Texas Tech, and really shows his versatility and adjustment. Going to the spread offense, something that allows this team to win. It'll be App State getting their hands on the ball first as the Mountaineers will receive the opening kickoff. The kickoff from Blake Erickson of the Bulldogs. Special teams have been a little bit of a struggle for Appalachian State. They uh, haven't been quite as good as they have been in special teams. Not bad, 
and not quite as effective. But again, they've got a lot of young players, and therefore a lot of young players that are fitting in on special teams. The Division I playoffs are underway. Coco Hillary at the 10. Hillary tripped up at the 25, falls forward to the 30, and that's where the Mountaineers will begin the offense. The quarterback of the Mountaineers, now a junior, and by the time he is done, Coach, Armani Edwards will have every record possible at Appalachian State. Well, not only as a passer, but also the rushing records, rushing right. and passing. That's pretty special for a quarterback. I am so impressed, though, with his accuracy, and he seems to be a much better passer this year than he was a year ago, so he's really added that to his arsenal. After this play, and I'll tell you why. Left-handed quarterback, right on target to Hillary, and Hillary dances up for the 45. Armani Edwards, 25 touchdowns through the air, only two interceptions. How do you beat that ratio? Well, you, do, you don't beat that ratio. You, a two-to-one touchdown to interception ratio is, is, is good, and that's about a 12-to-one uh, touchdown to uh, interception ratio, which is phenomenal. 14-yard gain on the first play from the line of scrimmage. Edwards given time again right across the middle this time it's his tight end Jordan who takes it across midfield and another first down before Hamlin could bring him down so let's look at the offense for the Mountaineers Josh Jackson gets the start he's a walk on at running back Coco Hillary is the main target as the wide receiver the offensive line they've been intact all year long for App State that's one of the keys to their success a tremendous key thrown out onto the flat pass by Corman and he dances out of bounds. Man, three big plays in a row to start things for the Mountaineers. And again, it's Hamlin having to make the stop. Have you said it earlier about the accuracy that you see from Armani Edwards? And, and boy, you see that in every pass he's throwing. He's throwing about three different styles of passes, flares down the field, uh, high percentage passes, but they've all been very catchable balls. What's the uh, expression? Shooting fish in a barrel? That's what he's <laughs> doing right now. Well, this offensive line that's been intact the entire season, that helps that because they were young to start with. Now they've got a lot of starts under their belt. Steps up in the pocket, running, tripped up from behind. Good play defensively by Cedric Lloyd. By the way, has seven sacks to lead the way for the Bulldogs. You look at that defensive line, and we mentioned Lloyd, who just made that last tackle. Marcus James, the other end, he has five sacks this year. The linebackers are good, led by Marshall McFadden, who leads the team with 63 tackles. And in the secondary, Phillips Adams, he is a very good cover guy and has four interceptions this year. What happened, Coach? They didn't get a first down and on first down. They actually only gained a few yards. Sounds like a win if they only make two <laughs> yards. Edwards again right on target. Pass caught by Corman again. And he's close to a first down at the 21. McFadden and Bush sandwich him there. Corman looks like a very good uh, possession receiver. Uh, kind of like a Wes Welker type player. Very quick, very explosive out of his routes. And really nice hands. He's catching the ball in his hands, getting the ball tucked away. And very few turnovers for this Appalachian State team. Boy, App State has moved the ball right down the field. And at the 21 now. And the handoff inside. And there goes Josh Jackson running hard. And they mix it up a little bit with a run. Ellerby makes the stop, but a gain of eight more. I think the thing you're seeing, as I, I mentioned earlier, with, about Armani Edwards, you asked about how he's so good. He's improved. I met Armani yesterday, and one of the things he asked me is, Coach, how do I be? How do I improve? How do I get better? And I'm thinking. You're one of the best ever. Uh, don't ask me that, but that just tells you what type player he is. He wants to continue to get better. They can't up. No, they do give it to Hillary. And then he has stopped. Nice play again by Cedric Lloyd. He's made two nice plays from that defensive end position. Lloyd's very athletic and one of the uh, top uh, pass rushers on this uh, South Carolina State team. An excellent tackle there. It'll be a loss of a couple of yards. Backs him up to the 16 yard line and will bring up third and five. The third and five against this team is a run, is to pass. You, you don't know. Either way, it's, it can be deadly. Appalachian State's so good in both areas. Empty backfield. Edwards, the only one back there. He's got it from the shotgun, and he throws a strike. Now the ball bobbled, and it's loose. Who's got it? I think South Carolina State has recovered this fumble. 
Ben Jordan caught the ball, McFadden knocked it loose, and guess what? The Bulldogs have taken over inside their five. Well, defensively, don't give up the big play, and South Carolina State did not do that. They wouldn't defend, but don't break. But it didn't give up the big play. Great throw again by Edwards. Again, nice get, get the ball tucked away, but a good hit. Ball bounces out, and, and a huge, huge break from South Carolina State. Terrence Smith able to fall on the ball. Right there, it's a first down right there, and then whoop, here comes the hit. And then look at Smith pounce on that ball. And South Carolina State on the early turnover with the Mountaineers, they were driving. Looked like it was going to be an easy score for them on their first drive. It was, and again, Bush also, the linebacker, number 30 Bush, was had an excellent play there. Long to throw from the end zone, wants it all. He's going deep, and the pass is picked off. Mark Legree with his 10th interception of the year. Wow. <laughs> I knew he had nine, which is a, 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 an inordinate number. That's a lot of interceptions. You can see now that at the tenth one, phenomenal break on the ball, great catch, and really good concentration. And what a huge play for Appalachian State. Ten interceptions to lead the nation, folks. You talk about a guy who is a great center fielder. He gets everything out there. Wow. So Mark Legree with his tenth interception of the year. And just like that, back-to-back -back turnovers, and the Mountaineers are back in business. The handoff this time to Robert Welton, and he has stopped after a gain of two. This was a secondary that was supposed to be a weak point of this football team. They lost all four starters from the national championship team a year ago. It's become a strength of this football team. And again, ten interceptions for Mark Legree. That's, that's just phenomenal. Unbelievable. I mean, the team now has 19 interceptions. He has 10 of them. Well, he's a candidate for the Buck Buchanan Award for the top defensive player in America. Edwards fading back. Now he'll try to get rid of it. And he put too much air under it. And this one is picked off. Marquis Hamlin. Edwards was just trying to get rid of the ball and didn't get enough on it. Well, Marquis Hamlin is one of the top defenders in the secondary for South Carolina State. But you're right. Uh, Edwards would love to have that play back. I, I just felt like he's trying to throw the ball out of bounds, but just did not get enough on the football to get it there. We always wonder in a game like this, now three turnovers in the first four minutes of the contest, is this a little bit of opening jitters for these two teams? Well, you think it might be for South Carolina State. You'd be a little surprised if we're opening jitters for Appalachian State. Of course, every game you win, the next game gets bigger. So here come the Bulldogs back on the attack again. They have it at their own 29. Well, you talk about four national championships in a row. They need to win today. Ford able to bust it outside. Looked like he was going to be stopped for a loss and turned it into a gain of about three. And look at Malcolm Long, quarterback of the Bulldogs. Pretty good numbers. 12 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Almost 2,000 yards on the year. He is a sophomore quarterback out of Gaffney, South Carolina. Really good high school program in Gaffney. We had a great player from Gaffney, also with the Western Redskins, the name of Rocky McIntosh, now staying linebacker in the hurdle at Gaffney High School. By the way, that interception was the first one Edwards had thrown in 176 straight pass attempts. Let's look at the offense for the Bulldogs, and again, Will Ford is the main man. He has over 1,300 yards on the ground this year. The go to guy is Oliver Trey Young. The wide receiver, the offensive line, very good, anchored in the middle by Raymond Harrison, the senior center. Again, we're talking about four national championships in a row. I, I think for set for App State, it's a win this game. Pass outside, they get it to Philip Morris. And a little activity going on out here as the ball comes out to the 43-yard line. Anthony Williams in on the stop. A nice job here. Good, good pass and catch. But uh, Philip Morris does a nice job after the catch and, and uh, breaking a tackle here, run right after contact, making a first down. Nice job by, by Philip Morris after the catch. We got a new quarterback in all of a sudden. I don't know what happened to Long, but Dwayne Clark, the freshman, a redshirt freshman in there, quarterback now. And just a little change of pace. And he just got the ball and ran with it and goes across midfield. And stopped right at the 50-yard line. Jacques Roman 
the linebacker with yet another tackle that makes it 108 on the year for Roman leading tackler in the Southern Conference. I think the thing you're seeing in college football now is a change of pace and I think yours uh, Clark is a better runner than long is so I think you're going to see the a little mixture throughout the day and to try to keep the Appalachian State defense off balance a little bit again Clark back in the game now excuse me long back in the game. Nathan long behind center looks like he's changing the play at the line second and short. And the handoff to Ford. Oh, excuse me. That's Travel Jamison, not Ford. And he's got the first down. Stopped at the 45 by D.J. Smith. I think this is what the South Carolina State needs to do to win this football game. They need to use the clock. They need to make first downs. They don't have to make big plays, but use the clock, grind it out, and score when they have the opportunity. So a fresh set of downs for Malcolm Long. Plenty of time. Pulls the pass down. Now fires a strike to the outside. Did he have it? That's a good catch by Philip Morris. Looked like he was bobbling it a little bit as he went out of bounds. Gain of 13 and a first down to the 31. And again, it's nice, a nice job by uh, Malcolm Law moving around in the pocket and throwing a perfect strike to Philip Morris. Uh, well, well, again, Long was on the move and a little bit of pressure, but uh, what a nice throw and a great job by Philip Morris getting his uh, getting his feet down. In college football, you only need one foot down. I think he got them both down. I do too. So again, from the shotgun, coming back to the ball is Young. Young still running with the ball inside the 15, stopped at the 13-yard line by Legree. Let's call this uh, this play a jailbreak screen where you've got the whole offense out to block and come against the grain. Got a nice job there by Young and, and a really good run after catch. But again, really a nice mixture of offensive balance by the South Carolina State offensive football team. Coach, the timing on that last play was impeccable. Oh, it's perfect. Exactly, it's yeah. perfect. Exactly what you, you needed. You it won't to see be. any better than that. Pass across the middle and partially deflected in and out of the hands of DeBose. Very good throw, though, by Long. Again, going to his left, going back really inside to the right, and a perfect strike. Let's see if this ball was deflected. No, this ball should have been caught. Looked like it's a great throw and should have been caught. Tried to catch it off his chest, and again, catch the ball in your hands. A little bit of distraction. Mm. Got to make that catch. So second and ten. Back in a quarterback, Clark. Handing off. Ford stopped. That was a touchdown saving tackle by Legree. Down to the three yard line, close to a first down. It's a tough time to break a tackle. It's right at the line of scrimmage. You can see Ford here sliding through some arm tackles, a lot of traffic there, but he has a good patience about it. Well, third and less than one from the three. I'm a little surprised at checking off here. You know, it's you don't know what you're going to get here. A give to Jamison. Jamison into the end zone for the touchdown, but there is a flag on the play. I think it's going to be a holding. This play's coming back. That's a tough call. I guess this is a great drive by South Carolina State, and it's a tough call to, to back them up. An illegal block. I don't know how Buddy's still a little smile on his face. Does this cost him a touchdown? Oh, he's not smiling inside, believe me. <laughs> that, look, that, looked like a, that looked like a Hollywood smile to me. That wasn't a real South Carolina State smile. Flipping. Number 50 of the offense, 15 yards from the previous line of scrimmage, replay second down. That's a little bit of a surprise call because uh, you can clip in the, in the, it's called the clipping zone, that three yard area, and, and uh, apparently he, he was out of that area when he blocked in the back. Mm. Huge penalty against the Bulldogs. So now they're backed all the way up to the 18 yard line. They need to reach the three for a first down. Their red zone offense is very good. They score 80% of the time in, in the red zone and 73% of the time touchdowns. But 
The penalties really, really backed them up, and this is going to be a tough call. I need to get points here. Third and 15. Good pass right on target. Touchdown. What a pass to Octavius Darby for the score. Well, you said it. That was a great pass, good protection, and a great throw. It's a tough, tough play there for uh, for South Carolina State because App State knows it's going to be a pass. It's a very tough, uh, tough offensive call, but a great call and great execution by this uh, South Carolina State offense. What a great drive. That's what you need to do on the road, and they've done a great job here in this first quarter. Officially a 19-yard touchdown pass to Darby, the fifth touchdown reception of the year for Darby. Now the extra point for Erickson, who's 43 of 50 this year. And that one splits the uprights. The early lead to the Bulldogs. Three turnovers have highlighted this first quarter. Two of them by Appalachian State. And a perfect strike from Long to Darby. Puts the Bulldogs on the board. The Jaguars take on the Texans at eight. ESPNU is now in high definition. To get great action on ESPNU in high definition, contact your local cable operator or satellite provider. ESPNU HD, the big picture in college sports. Well, that was a defined drive, wasn't it, for South Carolina State and Darby. He gets a rest after scoring a touchdown. Well, I've had that high def, and my wife's home watching now, and uh, she's, uh, I'm sure, enjoying it. Believe me. Man, that's great stuff. No, it is great stuff. So, App State beginning this first for four straight titles, and now they're in a hole. Here comes Coco Hillary. Whoa. He leaps across the 25. Looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Coco Hillary's throwing his body around. He's, he's into this game. This is a Sports Center moment here. Man. I'd rather Coco stay on the ground. This is going to concern me a little bit. Oof. Flies through the air with the greatest of ease. And probably gets to talk to from his coaches saying, hey, uh, nice effort, but come on. We need you in the game. And a sack here. Good play by Bush, the linebacker. Now let's go to Lowell Galindo with our first update. Well, guys, Virginia Tech can go on to the ACC title game by taking down Virginia. This is how you do that. Tyrod Taylor, Jarrett Boykin, we are tied at seven. We saw Virginia Tech coach last week as they were able to beat Duke, and they're in the driver's seat, Virginia Tech, if they win today. Edwards, what a pass! Right on target. Tony White finally able to make the stop, but Brian Quick with a quick strike. Well, Chris Quick is kind of their uh, vertical uh, passing game, and and uh, I don't believe I've seen a more accurate pass than what I've seen in Armani Edwards. What a great throw, and just a small crease, and a great catch, and a nice run after catch. Boy, Brian Quick, coach, a basketball player until his senior year in high school. He played one year of high school football. Now Edwards on the draw. He'll gain 10. As he takes it down to the 36-yard line, Hamlin in on another stop. So many of these uh, football players are outstanding basketball players, the, the receivers, the quarterbacks, and also you see so many of these defensive ends and tight ends, and uh, they're also outstanding basketball players. Eye-hand coordination, all the things you need to play basketball really fit well in, on the football field. Edwards, empty backfield. Quick hitter across the middle. That's Hillary. Hillary. Boy, a game-saving tackle, or I should say touchdown-saving tackle by Hamlin, or Hillary was gone, and he has tripped up at the 15. Well, he's had 46 catches and, and really over 600 yards in receptions, and, and I tell you, once he catches it, again, a perfect throw, which really allows him to be a runner after the catch, and he gets up field. I really like this out of Coco Hillary. Boy, if Hamlin doesn't trip him up, he's in the end zone. Now Edwards dances up into the pocket, and he'll actually gain about a yard on this play. Well, not a sack, but that, again, a win for the South Carolina State defense just to just to contain Armani Edwards for only a yard. Edwards is the leading rusher for the Mountaineers. 
He's gained about 900 yards on the year and has nine rushing touchdowns. That's a lot for a quarterback. Again, as you mentioned earlier, Dave, he's going to leave here as a top rusher and passer in App State history. Already the Southern Conference and Appalachian State's all-time leader in total yards. Second and nine, Edwards. He runs hard down to the six-yard line, close to a first down. Wilkerson, the linebacker, with a stop there. It'll make it a third and one situation. They'll run the option play, and you have a quarterback like uh, Armani Edwards, you can run the option. And again, just a good decision here. He had a crease and made a nice, uh, nice seven-yard gain. You see here, here comes the option. Nobody to take the quarterback. Good decision by Armani Edwards and an outstanding game. I'm going to ask you the same question he asked you as this game goes on. How can this guy get better? Well, I asked him that question. I think he's pretty good right now. On third and one, they throw to the end zone. A catch is made. Is it good for the touchdown? Yes. Wow, what a play by Jordan. Ben Jordan needed that. He had the fumble earlier. He needed he needed that catch to make up for that turnover early in the game. And you're not going to make a better catch than that. And Edwards did, did a nice job. Just a sprint to the left, but a throwback all the way. It was pretty well covered, but an outstanding throw. And, and you can see the catch made by uh, by Ben Jordan. Well, the coverage was pretty good by Quattlebaum, but a great catch by Jordan. So to tie things up, the point after by Viteris, and he's got it. And just like that, we are tied at seven. A good drive by App State, capped by this lob pass into the end zone to Jordan. We're tied at seven. Appalachian State able to tie the game at seven. Great play by Edwards, and then an unbelievable catch by Jordan. Well, really pretty good coverage here by Devon uh, Quattlebaum from South Carolina State, but you're not going to throw it and catch it any better than that. And again, uh, Edwards, uh, excuse me, Jordan was, a, was a, a former high school wide receiver. Two of the best tight ends I ever had were former wide receivers. Kellen Winslow was a wide receiver. We, we moved to tight end. Jeremy Shockey was a wide receiver. We moved to tight end. Both first round tight end draft choices are playing in the National Football League now. And that's a, a nice job there by Ben Jordan. 6'2", 240, Ben Jordan. With the touchdown there, and you made a good point, Coach, about how he had dropped the ball inside the five earlier, and he atoned for that. He, had, he needed to do that to make up. Terrace, short kick, bobbled. It's on the turf. Finally picked up by DeVos, and then no gain after that. So the short kick really works out well for Appalachian State as they will pin the Bulldogs inside their own 20. I don't know if that was a planned kick, but it worked out well and, and really was high and short, very difficult to field and made it very easy to cover. I, I, I see some of the, the squib kicks late in the game sometimes. This is the kick I like to do late in the game, a high pooch kick, really force a team to fair catch rather than the short squib kick to give the, the uh, opposing team great field position. Starting on the 18, first down. Give here to Ford. Big hole. Ford hauled down at the 29-yard line by Banks. The South Carolina State offensive line is really doing a nice job creating some, some really not holes, but just uh, some they're, they're maintaining and working hard and allowing a good running back, Will Ford, to make that cut in a crease. When he sees it, he attacks it. He does remind me of such so much of uh, Clinton Portis now with uh, the Washington Redskins, another number 28. That is high praise. Will Ford, by the way, the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year. He's got over 3,500 yards in his career. Clark, the backup quarterback, on the keeper, gets a couple. Again, it's Pierre Banks. What a story Pierre Banks is. <laughs> there is a hold against the Bulldogs, and they'll bring this one back. But how about Pierre Banks, Coach? He's uh, a senior linebacker, but he is not the senior member of his family, not by a long stretch. He is the 16th of 17 children in his family. Same father, same mother. None of them adopted. 17 kids, 
He's number 16. He has an older brother who's 51. Pierre Banks is a, is a great story. Offense, number 50. 10 yards from the previous line of scrimmage. Replay first down. But somebody's done something right along the way because also Pierre Banks is a great, he's an outstanding football player, but he's a great student. He's a finalist for the Dratty Award. He's, he's a 3.9 student. The Dratty Award being, it's the Heisman Trophy for academics in football. He's a finalist for that award. A great story for Pierre Banks. Catch is made by DeBose, stays on his feet. Boy, really fighting off some tackles and gets it up to the 36-yard line. Finally, Bennett and Banks able to sandwich him and bring him down. Well, you, you can see now why South Carolina State was undefeated in, in the league because they rate no. They're a very good football team. You can see they have a lot of weapons on offense, and, and their defensive team is probably the strength of their football team. Yeah, I should point out that touchdown by Appalachian State, the first one, that South Carolina State has surrendered in the last three games. They've pitched three shutouts in a row to close the regular season. Give here to Jamison. He does not have the first down. In fact, stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Banks and then Jacques Roman. Roman, the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Well, the linebackers are really great for the Mountaineers. Just an outstanding group of linebackers. All three of them are recognized as all-conference players and, and uh, really a terrific crew of, uh, of linebackers uh, injury timeout here as Malcolm Bennett is being looked to and they're going to bring him off the field he doesn't want to come off but I think he's got to now well we're talking about the South Carolina State the defense they've only allowed 15 points per game that's the thing I look at as a defensive stat is how many points do you allow? They allow 15 points per game, and that's going to be, uh, if they can hold this App State team to 15 points, that'll be a great day for the defensive mm -hmm. football team. Whatever. So after they get Bennett off the field, South Carolina State facing a third and a long two. Two for two so far today on third down. Jamison, he does not have it. Jamison hit right at the point of contact by Anthony Williams. So Jamison stopped in the punting unit, has to come out for the Bulldogs. Aaron Hare has averaged 41 yards per punt this year. Punt of the game. We've seen three turnovers, but it's the first punt, and it's a good one. Gonna go out of bounds. Well, that's an excellent punt by Aaron Hare, as this ball will be spotted out at the 12 yard line. Buddy Pugh tied with the Mountaineers at seven. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Five feet from the hole, right here. <laughs> Hey, big fella. Want a cold one? Yeah, that's it. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Jack Link's jerky. Feed your wild side. He's not afraid to. Appalachian State, South Carolina State, tied at seven. NCAA Division I Championship first round action presented on the U by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We're in the last moments of this first quarter, and App State takes over on their own 12-yard line. Really wide line splits, splits with this App State offensive line. Edwards checking off. Fires a strike. That again is Jordan. Close to a first down. They mark it up to the 22 yard line. Terrence Allen was right there for the hit. Well, he is a former quarterback coach. You talk about, uh, I don't care how much arm strength you have, but accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. And, and Armani Edwards has tremendous accuracy. I'm very impressed with him as a passer. It's got to be fun to be a receiver for him, right? I mean, everything's right in your hands. I'd like to be his coach. <laughs> Edwards with no one open downfield. Fires a strike out to the flat. Boy, 
and nice little check off there. So he's able to get it to Welton, who makes only a second catch of the year. Lloyd with the stop. Well, not only his accuracy, but what a quick release that was. He uh, slides up in the pocket. That had to be the second, third, fourth option in his, in his, uh, in his progression. And watch him slide up and just a nice little flip, but a perfect, perfect throw. Hitting the running back in, in stride, allowed him to be a, be a runner. Now that turns out to be the last play of this first quarter. Edwards threw a touchdown pass in quarter number one. He also threw an interception. But as we came to Boone, North Carolina today to watch this first round game between South Carolina State and Appalachian State, we're wondering, can the Mountaineers do it yet again? Be whoever you want to be at ESPNU with friends. Friends. What a start today for Armani Edwards as we get ready to start the second quarter of play. Edwards, by the way, with what he's already done here today, he has gone over 10,000 yards of total offense. And remember, he's just a junior. I was talking to Jerry Moore yesterday about his quarterbacks and all the great ones around the country. And I said, well, Jerry, would you want to trade? And he says, no, I'm going to keep the quarterback I have. I like Armani Edwards. I think he's as good as any of them. And he's my quarterback, and I want to keep him. You know a guy's good when he's running out of room on his helmet for all those emblems. Well, we'll give him a new helmet. He, whatever he needs. <laughs> Take care of him. So first down for App State at the 35. Edwards throwing on the run, and guess what? Throws another strike, and he finds Jordan once again. Again, the quick release. Really a perfect throw on the move. He can throw from the pocket. Watch him slide out here. Nice job buying time. Been patient. Just a perfect strike to uh, strike to Jordan. Threw it a little behind him. <laughs> it was like an inch behind uh, him, I think. He won't get a style point for yeah, that one. Yeah, though. right. So across the 50 they go to the 49 of the Bulldogs. The handoff goes to Josh Jackson, and he is waylaid right at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for a yard. Marcus James put on quite a hit. That knocked his jersey loose. Armani Edwards is a finalist uh, for the uh, Walter Payton Award, who's the top player in the FCS. And, and uh, you can see why he is. And uh, to see it, I'm sure there are a lot of really good players. But boy, to, for someone to be better than him, it had to be very special. Edwards, another strike. This one to Hillary. He'll fall forward for another first down. Let's get an update on Georgia and Georgia State. Yeah, the Dodge are trying to continue their dominance over the Ramblin' Wreck, but Matthew Stafford is throwing to no one in particular. Morgan Burnett with his seventh pick of the season takes it back. Tech would miss the extra points, and the Dodge still leading by one. It's a good matchup there, isn't it? Georgia and Georgia Tech today. We were impressed earlier, Coach, with Georgia Tech, and we're impressed right now with Armani Edwards. He throws yet another strike, this one to Mac Klein. Yeah, he, he's on fire. He's on fire. They may need to ice him down because he just, uh, everything is just like a clockwork. It's like surgery for, uh, for Armani Edwards. He hasn't thrown an incompletion today. He does have the interception. But every pass he's thrown has been caught by somebody. Well, it's really a nice, nice crease, but he just anticipates the passing window so well. You can see here moving around. A good decision. Good decision, yes. That's his technically his first incomplete pass. Now he'll be 13 of 15 on the day. But the one that was incomplete earlier was actually completed to Marquis Hamlin, the defensive back for the Bulldogs. So, I mean, you look at 13 of 15, 189 yards already. Now, you, you don't want that completion to Mar Marky Hamlin on the opposite team. Well, but, you really uh, don't. And, and that he, was a really bad play. I mean, and, and only his third interception of the year, though. Right, really trying to throw the ball away on that one. Lost it up into the end zone, and too far. Hillary ran out of real estate. You get good coverage there by Terrence Smith from South Carolina State. Uh, really no place to throw the football, but a good decision by Edwards to throw the ball away. The old coaching adage, uh, we're going to get it or nobody's going to get mm -hmm. it. You have mentioned earlier, South Carolina State very good in the red zone. So too are the Mountaineers. They are, well, 47-51 coming into this game in the red zone with 
41 touchdowns. They've been in the red zone twice today, and they're one for two so far. That one fumble and then the touchdown. Pass is caught. Dancing around on the sideline out there is Elder. Phillip Adams knocked him out. I think he's going to be a little bit shy of the first down marker. So it'll be an interesting decision here for Jerry Moore. Looks like the field goal unit's going to come out. Well, Coach Moore didn't take a, a poll from the fans because they wanted to go for it. But uh, by this stage of the game, points, I think, are, are certainly key. And uh, he's been here before. He knows what his team can do and what he needs to do. But Terrace with the field goal try, 7 of 10 this year. And this one from 26 yards is good. So the Mountaineers have scored the last 10 points of this game. They take their first lead, 10-7, at the 12:44 mark. Sit down, sit down. You like those? Come on, we got all the new under armor back here. We welcome you back to the campus of Appalachian State in Boone, North Carolina. Beautiful campus here, nestled into. The mountains of the Appalachians. Look at that picturesque little chalet. I think, uh, you know, at halftime, I almost said I could spot a deer or bear running through the forest because I know they're here. I can oh, yeah. I can sense it. So can all the uh, fans that came and dressed in camouflage. Uh, it's great. This is a great atmosphere. This is really a terrific. Uh, I believe there's what 14,000 people live in Boone, and uh, the school's about what 17,000. That's right. So uh, this, this this university is very, very important to uh, to this area. Terrace with a kickoff. Angling over toward DeBose. And he caught the ball when he should have let it go out of bounds. Well, now they're going to say it is out of bounds. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. And the reason they're going to give it the out of bounds call is they said when he made the catch to Bose, he was out of bounds. What in the world was he thinking? Well, I think that's a called a, a middle a middle error. I think his right foot was out of bounds when he made the catch. And we we'll see here, they don't use replay in the Division One playoffs, at least in this round. And I don't know. He's got the ball there, and then the foot goes down. Well, that's a big play because now the ball goes to the 40 yard line and, and then he uh, tried to get back inbounds. I mean that that is a guy that's just not thinking straight. No, that was a that was that was a mental error. Coach P will talk to him about that. Yeah. I'm sure when he comes off uh, off to the sideline. Hmm. So the ball comes out to the 40 yard line. The fans don't like the call and I'm sure the coach doesn't like what DeBose did but. He got bailed out by the fact that he was already out of bounds. Picked off. No, incomplete. Boy, what a good coverage over there by Banks. Man. This afternoon, ESPNU delivers more college football. Well, we've got some great matchups coming your way starting at 3.30 today when the North Carolina Tar Heels take on the Duke Blue Devils. That's becoming a good rivalry in football, too. Well, it is. Uh, Duke is much improved, and of course, North Carolina coach Davis is getting that team uh, into prominence. So it's a, it'll, it'll develop into a good rivalry. I believe we, if we would have instant replay, I, I believe that ball would have been placed back where the ball was caught. I think, I think the, right. the catch was made when the one foot was in bounds. Yep, one or two. The give here to Ford, trying to bust it outside, and does. And there it goes down the sideline. Good tackle on the outside there by D.J. Smith. Or Ford might have been gone. Well, Ford has averaged over six yards a carry for the entire year. And you can see here what a good job again by this offensive line of South Carolina State. And uh, you give him a crease, and he's a patient, he's patient, he's patient. Then he hits the crease. And he's really a good, good football player, really a good running back. Another big run, that one. A 14-yard gain. Kind of a weird play there for South Carolina State that never developed, and Ford goes down at the line. DJ Smith was in the territory. They tried to have a little misdirection there, and again, they just didn't get it blocked, and uh, not uh, no running room for Ford. It's only the second meeting between these two schools. Last time was '84, and Appalachian State shut out the Bulldogs, 24 to nothing. 
the freshman uh, Dwayne Clark, uh, number 16, is going in. Every time he's been in the game so far, he's he's run the football. Let's see if that uh, trend continues. Going to run it again. If you keep seeing him run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and he's only thrown the ball 34 times all year, you probably start thinking, when he comes in, I think we're just going to bring everybody up in the box. Well, I've kind of figured that out so far, so I'm sure the, <laughs> I'm sure the uh, App State coaches have figured it out, too. But you know what? It might be just setting up the big play yeah. later in the game. Well, th yeah, I could be fooled, right? Right. You better stay true. Well, third <laughs> and seven here. Now Long's back in. Pass. Pressure coming. And they dump it off. Boy, perfect play call, but I'm not sure that Ford got the first down. Tripped up by Ed Ganey. I think he may be a little short, but if he's short, it's going to be about a foot short, and, and I believe they'll go for it here. Well, you've got the best running back in the MEAC and Will Ford. I don't know why you wouldn't go for it, although Ford coming over to the sideline. It is going to bring up a fourth down and about the length of a football. So fourth and inches, and Buddy Pugh is going to go for it. Can't I like question this, this call. It's a good call. I think it's a good call because, again, you've got to make first downs to beat App State. And Long wants to call a timeout. He didn't like the play they had called there on fourth and inches and calls a timeout. So we'll take it with him. 10 14 to go till halftime. App State leading 10 to 7. The phone company has an important message for its customers. Don't listen to Vonage. Well, over 2 million people. ESPNU now in high definition. To get the great action on ESPNU in high definition, contact your local cable operator or satellite provider. ESPNU HD, the big picture in college sports. With Larry Coker, I'm Dave Armstrong, and our entire ESPNU crew. Division I championship first round action on the U, presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Well, a fourth and in inches facing the Bulldogs. Malcolm Long, the quarterback. Travel, Jam Travel Jamison is the running back, and he's got the first down to the 35. Got a yard, he only needed a few inches. Jameson has a lot of touchdowns, and he, he's a little better short yardage uh, yep. running back than uh, they feel like that Ford is. Uh, that's not my opinion. I guess it's kind of what South Carolina State Buddy Pugh feels because they put him in on short yardage and sometimes on goal line situation. Talking about travel, Jameson. Yep. Jameson with 16 touchdowns. Ford has 12 this year. Play action pass across the middle. What a catch! in traffic by DeBose. Legree was there on the coverage, but the catch was made. What a play by DeBose. Well, this is uh, sometimes you throw through a passing window. This was thrown through a porthole, and this was a uh, what nice concentration uh, by the receiver, uh, Dustin DeBose. Love and Legree were both there. So a first down, they mark it at the 22. There goes Ford, hauled down from behind. Good tackle there. As Tanya able to make the stop from behind. I think the thing I wanted to see in this game for South Carolina State, can, can they run the football? Mm -hmm. I think they've shown in this first half that yes, they can run the football. And you can see here they're doing a nice job blocking. And, and of course, with uh, Ford carrying the football, well, they've got a chance to make first downs, and they're doing really a good job of that. 66 yards on the ground, Coach, in the first half for the Bulldogs. And they mixed the passing game in well also. A little fumble, and that kind of ruined the timing of the play. It looked like Ford having trouble getting the handle on the ball. I think if he'd gotten the handle on the football, I think it could have been really uh, exciting for South Carolina State because he had really had a nice freeze and a little delay trying to get control of the football really slowed him down some. You can see there he almost drops it there, and then he stumbles, which is probably a good break for uh, App State. He did get the first down, so it's 
First and 10 from the 11. Quick hitter. And they're wanting a flag. No flag called. I don't think that was a catchable ball. Philip Morris was the intended receiver. Well, Philip Morris has excellent height, but uh, you're right. That ball wasn't catchable. That slant, especially near the goal line, you need to bring the ball down uh, pretty close to uh, the chest or below chest level. You see the ball very high. And, and uh, possibly could have gotten an interference call. I don't know where the left arm was. That's the one that usually uh, causes the interference. Ed Ganey was there, the freshman, the true freshman on the coverage. Second and 10 from the 11. Tripped up. And that messed everything up. Jamison then tripped too. The Bulldogs just tripping all over themselves. A little self-destruction here, and uh, they had such a great drive going, and now they've uh, they've uh, said, you see, uh, the right guard looks like uh, Nigel Pearson stepped on the quarterback's foot, and that can happen occasionally. He's driving back in protection and to cut off the backside, and he just stepped on the quarterback's foot, and therefore you see Malcolm Long trip and not able to make the exchange to Jam Jamison. Last time it was third and long in this area. Darby scored a touchdown, and guess what? Darby does it again. Same play. You better cover him. There's a reason they score in the red zone, isn't it? They can run the ball, and obviously they can pass the ball in the red zone, overcoming the, the penalty earlier and overcoming the big negative plays in this drive. As Yogi would say, Coach, it's deja vu all over <laughs> again. Wow, what a play by Darby, and another perfect strike from Long. A really a nice route and, and again the, the, the ball could have been thrown with better timing and better ball placement. Low snap. Good job by the holder there to get that ball on the tee and allow Erickson to get the point after. So it's 14 to 10 and twice now Malcolm Along has found his tight end, Octavius Darby, for the touchdown. He's not Octavius Darby with a pair of touchdown grabs today to give South Carolina State a 14 to 10 lead. And coach, looked like the same play call on both touchdowns. Yeah, you better cover, cover Darby when you get down in the red zone because uh, I think it was the same play, a little bit of post corner. And again, a nice job uh, beating the safety and, and a great throw by Long. I think Malcolm Long wants to uh, let everybody know that there are two quarterbacks in this game and and not just uh, and not just Amani Edwards. Yeah, Long having a good day. He's eight for 12 with an interception, 111 yards and two touchdown passes. And another long drive, 12 plays this time. The other touchdown had a 10 play drive. Well, App State uh, red zone defense has been great all year, but uh, not uh, not so much today. Another short kick taken at the 30 yard line. And a great return taken at the 30 and then brought all the way up to near midfield. So Richard Long, the linebacker with the return. And he gets it up to the 44 yard line. That's great field position for App State. That's always a little scary on the kicks because you usually, usually you have linebackers in that position because that is a blocking position mm -hmm. and they don't feel the ball very much. So, uh, you know, we, we used to work every week and I'm sure that these teams do too on that player fielding, fielding the short uh, short kickoffs. Well, time for Edwards to go back to work. So far on the day, he's 14 of 17 for 196 yards. Oh, you don't know what you want to do. Side handoff to Welton. He's tripped up at the line. Falls forward about three yards. It's like App State coach. They're starting to kind of find a rhythm. Their first two drives, not good. Two turnovers in a row. Last two drives. Touchdown, field goal. So it looks like App State really starting to get things going. With a nice run there by Edwards, we get you on the run to the studio. Guys, this is the Matt Stafford that we're used to seeing. Dropping back for Georgia, throwing the laser to Muhammad Massaqua. Georgia would take the lead. Ramblin' Wreck came back. They missed a two-point conversion. Still down two. We 
good battle there for the rights to the state of Georgia. Well, Georgia's won that game several years in a row now, and this is a very important game for the uh, for the uh, Rambling Wreck. And Snow under. Thrown all the way back to the 25. They stopped him at the 40. Keon Brooks was in on the sack. Armani Edwards doesn't take many sacks, but this is a certainly a great defensive stop by this uh, South Carolina State defense. And I, I think uh, I think the South Carolina State offense has given a lot of energy to the to their defense because they're really playing a lot of a uh, lot of intensity right now. So that brings up a fourth and long fourth and 14 and the punter comes out Neil Young. The wall in front of him Young boots it down to the 23 yard line. Dangerous run back there is a flag on the play. This is probably going to come back. But for the moment Adams takes it all the way down inside the 10 to the 7. It is going to come back. There's a clip on the play and really uh, those are things special teams coaches just drive you crazy because you got to block above the waist and you cannot clip and just throw the arms up use your body shield the player but don't hit, hit a player in the back and that was was an obvious clip right in front of the uh, the official. There goes Adams one way and that could have been it right there. I think it might have been. So that huge return is going to come all During the return, way back. Illegal block in the back. Number 24, the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the block. First down. The call against Desmond Benjamin. That's a huge call against the Bulldogs. So instead of getting the ball at about the seven yard line, seven yards to go, they'll bring it all the way back and it'll be inside the 20 by the time they get done marking off the penalty. Another flag came in and unsportsmanlike conduct against App State, we believe. It might have been called against Mark Legree. Well, you can't make these mistakes. It's, there's too much on the line to, to have the foolish penalties. You, you, you tell your team, you're going to have some penalties called, but have them while making good effort, but don't have the foolish penalties. And some of these have been foolish penalties. So they'll mark off, I would assume they mark off the clipping call, and then they'll tack on 15 more for the unsportsmanlike conduct. So they'll first go back half the distance to the goal from the clip, and that would mark it at the 14, and then from there they'll come up 15 yards. So it should come up to the 29, where the Bulldogs will start their offense. Sort it all out for you there, and it's still going to be bad news for South Carolina State. And we'll come back as they start their drive, already leading App State by four. <laughs> Jerry Moore's Mountaineers trying for an unprecedented fourth straight national title, but they're behind right now. South Carolina State, 14 to 10. Normally they dominate the second quarter. Not so here today. No, they've, they've been dominant. And the Jerry Moore, six-time uh, coach of the year. You do it one time, it's pretty special. He's been six times selected as coach of the year. So quite a run. They have won 12 straight playoff games. That's a record. Get here to Ford. He falls forward for a few yards up to the 32 yard line. This is a very important drive, I think, for both teams. But if you could see uh, South Carolina State really be a positive here and get points on the board, I think that'd be a great way to go into the half. And again, App State, they need to stop. They need to get their offense to football. The defense forced 13 punts last week against Western Carolina, just one today. Ford again. He just waits for that hole and then busts through it. He is extremely patient. Uh, 
again, the, the two, Clint Portis and Thurman Thomas were the two best I've ever had with that type of patience. And you just see he waits, waits, and when he sees it, he really has a nice sense of attacking the crease. So Sanders wasn't that patient, Barry no, Sanders? No, pa Sanders would run into the line of scrimmage and bounce off and then run for 80 yards. <laughs> But he learned to be patient. That's one thing he did learn. I think he learned that a lot from uh, from Thurman Thomas. Mm, interesting. Well, first down there. Two running plays for Ford to get the first down. In a perfect world for the Bulldogs, they'd run the clock down to nothing and score right as the end, the half was coming to a close. Perfect ending for App State, though, would be to get the ball back and try to get the lead. Well, they need to stop now. And I think they'd like to have one more opportunity for their offense and. And uh, I think uh, Armani Edwards really would like to get back on the field with this offensive football team from App State. Lost there of one, second and 11 now, facing Long and company. I believe that's the first negative play that they've had uh, trying to tackle uh, Will Ford uh, for a loss. Now an empty backfield. Long, quick here to the outside, off the shoulder pads of Philip Morris. Pierre Banks was right in the neighborhood. Well, not a bad drop there because that would have been a negative play, a loss, and he made that catch. So you look over and Long, every time they've had third and long, he has found his tight end Darby. Of course, those two times have resulted in a touchdown. Now you might want to look for Darby again. He's been, uh, been quite an open receiver. He's the type of athlete also. He's a tight end. He can split out as he is now and be a wide receiver type of lineman, and that's where he is. Third and 11. Long steps up. And their attended receiver was DeBose. Again, good coverage by Leonard Love. I think the South Carolina State uh, coaches wanted an interference call there, and they, they might have, have good justification, but no call was made. You got to put it behind you and press on. Well, now, App State, after that stop, coach, they're going to get the ball back with plenty of time and all three timeouts remaining. Plenty of time, and uh, they just have to be patient, do a good job feeling this punt, and get their offense back on the field, and you really have to do a good job if you're the South Carolina State defense. Good punt, angling away from Frazier. He's got at the 20. Big return by Frazier. All the way up to the 47-yard line. I thought you were going to say down goes Frazier, but you didn't say that, did you? Oh. <laughs> that was an excellent return. You know, the, I, I think uh, the punter really made a mistake there. He wanted to punt it to the right, get it in this right side, and it went off to the left, and that's what the coverage was covering to the right, to the short side of the field, and really all the coverage was on, on really on the opposite side of the field. You can see there's no coverage to the return man's right, and really a nice job on the return. You know, we always talk about how a receiver catches a ball in stride. Frazier caught that ball in stride. He caught it in stride. Big run up the middle by Welton, and he takes it all the way down to the 36-yard line. Big run by Robert Welton. I should say quick pass here to Welton. Little screen job. Trying to slow down the rush. Uh, South Carolina State really had great pressure on Edwards the last series, trying to slow that rush down just a little bit by the quick screen in the middle. Edwards wants to go for it all into the end zone. Touchdown! Wow! Brian Quick with a quick score. One official is saying touchdown, another one coming in saying he did not have it. And now they're ruling it incomplete. This was a great throw. A good call, going for the vertical, going for all of it. And, and uh, you're not going to throw any better than this. Really good protection. And watch where this ball is, right on the money. And, and uh, again, a pretty nice job there by, uh, by uh, Philip Adams, uh, really keeping his hands in, trying to get the ball stripped and not aligning the catch. I, I couldn't see that, but on the replay, you can see that. Really a nice job by Philip Adams and a good job by the officials because the one back judge he really had his back to the play couldn't see because quick was shielding him and the other one came in and made the call now Hardy as he takes it down to the 27 yard line very close to a first down fighting for that extra yard 
Now that was a good call because there's no replay in this game, so it has to be called on the field. Right. And really a good job by the officials getting the play right, and that's the key. Get it right. And they did. I mean, if there were replay in this game, official replay, that would have been the correct call. That would have been the correct call. Yeah. So a first down there as Hardy fought for that extra yard. Fresh set of downs for Edwards. Still plenty of time remaining. Edwards steps up, fires it across the middle. That's Coco Hillary dancing into the end zone. Wow. I like Coco Hillary. I like what he does catching the football in his hands. This guy's got Wes Welker written all over him. He catches the ball. And after the catch, really is explosive with the football and, and knows what to do with it. He gets north and south. That's his fifth touchdown of the year. I loved how Edwards stepped up in that pocket, right. though, coach, and fired a strike across the middle. Well, what you like about Edwards is he, he will run the football, but he's going to get the ball in the hands of the playmakers. The Terrace with a point after, and it's good. And what a turn of events here. This game is really spun on a dime. After the punt, big return, and then marching right down the field. Just a quick play fake. Nice job sliding up in the pocket and, and just uh, throw on the money. And really a nice run after catch and, and a good job by Coco Hillary. You see why he's their leading, rec leading receiver with 46 catches for the year. A 27-yard touchdown strike from Edwards to Hillary, his favorite target on the field, and you can see why. Yeah, he'd be my favorite target too. Look, nice hands. See the hands. Doesn't try to body catch it. Reaches out nicely with the hands and brings the football in. I know a lot of people are going to compare everyone to Crabtree from Texas Tech with his hands, but that kind of looked like it. I mean, the way he reached out and grabbed that ball. Yeah, he did. And I think Crabtree's probably the best I've ever seen at that. And uh, I don't know that I've seen a receiver hardly I can compare no, I to Crabtree. I haven't seen that much of him, but what I have, he's extremely impressive. Well, that was a great catch and then run after the catch by Hillary as you mentioned coach getting north and south in a hurry and how about that quick strike just over a minute on that drive only four plays and considering that they had one play called back because quick thought he had the touchdown and instead dropped it in the end zone. Well they do they, they don't take a lot of time to score sometimes I think they had 29 of their 64 touchdown drives were two minutes or less so they're a quick strike offense since they went to the spread coach. 45% of their scoring drives are two minutes or less. Now they're, they're a perfect spread football team. And bringing the ball back here is DeBose. He gets it up to the 28-yard line. The NCAA Division I football championship concludes on ESPN2 HD December 19th. Game coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern for a preview of every NCAA national championship, including the 2008 NCAA Division I football championship. You could go to NCAA.com, the official online home, for all 88 NCAA championships. And you look at Malcolm Long, he's had a good day. Two touchdowns, both of them to his tight end, Darby. And 111 yards through the air. This time he gives it to Ford. Ford looking for some blockers ahead of him. And App State did a pretty good job in stringing that play out. They did. I, I think right now that... Uh, South Carolina State needs to be patient to have a lot of time They have timeouts left. I think the, the the scoreboard shows three left. I think they only have two left, but they do have plenty of time. They just need to be patient, make first downs. And, and first of all, they need to keep the football. I agree with you that they should have two left because they called one earlier, but the scoreboard and our scoreboard each show three. I certainly remember and that remember right. that fourth and inches and he called the timeout. I think Malcolm Long did call the, the, uh, the call the timeout. Tipped off and incomplete. Boy, that could have been picked off. The ball was in the air for a tantalizing few seconds. But well, usually those are picked off and are tipped over the middle like that. So a very fortunate play there for South Carolina State. Just got clarification from our truck coach that that timeout wasn't charged to Long and to the Bulldogs. It was an official timeout. So they do have all three of their timeouts remaining, but now, more importantly, faced with a third and seven. They need seven yards now more than they need a timeout. That's right. And they're not going to get it. Even if it was completed, they weren't going to get it because D.J. Smith was there to bust up the play. We're going to have a punt now for, by South Carolina State, and you're going to see a lot of time left now for uh, 
for App State. And again, you're right. There's no chance here. Good, good play by the defender. And even if he had made the catch, there'd been no chance. Well, what a turn of events here in Boone. I mean, South Carolina State really kind of had the Mountaineers on their heels a little bit. And this last flurry by App State, and it's not done yet, folks. Under two minutes to go. This is a great punt, though. And it's going to bounce inside the 10. Wow. What a punt by Aaron Hare. It'll finally be down at the five yard line. Tonight, ESPNU delivers more college football action. And this is a good one. Vanderbilt takes on Wake Forest. College football primetime presented by City on ESPNU and ESPNU HD tonight at 7 Eastern. So here is Armani Edwards starting way back at his own five yard line. Look what he's done today. 248 yards through the air, two touchdown passes. He did have that one silly interception. But he has been electrifying here in this first half. And quarterback draw runs it all the way up to the 21 yard line. That gets him out of the hole. Really does a very safe call. And, and uh, again, with Armani Edwards being the ball carrier, it's a it's a, a very good call. He's a he's a player that really can frustrate a defense because whatever you do, he can he can hurt you. Here, you got receivers covered, but it's a, it's a quarterback draw and well blocked in the middle and, and a first down run. Now Edwards slings it out there and it's picked off. Pass is intercepted by Philip Adams. The second interception of the day for Edwards. He had two all year coming in. Well, he's getting pressured. Had a blitz, uh, blitz from the short side of the field, and really got pressure on Edwards and forced him to, to deliver the football. You can see he gets hit right after the throw and balls up in the air. And the only chance he had there would be for the receiver to come back and, and to compete for the football, but really, really no chance uh, to make a play there. A quick slip down as he was coming back for the ball. But he's be the one to have to become a defender because the ball was well underthrown. What a break for South Carolina State to get this field position and still have timeouts. Ford stutter step in the backfield and then stopped after a gain of one by Banks. I should say Banks and Company because there were a lot of guys in the neighborhood, including Jacques Roman. South Carolina State probably needs to use their timeouts here. They don't need to go into halftime and bank those because we have have three timeouts left and uh, now you're down to uh, 45 seconds. And you got great field position. You need to score on this drive. Well, they wasted about 15 seconds there, coach, and they could have called the timeout. There goes Ford again, busting a tackle. Ford gets to the outside and then goes out of bounds at the 31, forced out by Legree. They know their two-minute offense better than I do. Their two-minute offense is give it to Ford and let him run. And uh, really nice play here. But again, use your timeouts on this drive if you need to. You've got three. You can't bank them. Get a nice cut against the grain. Broken tackle. Under normal circumstances, you'd say they're in field goal range. But keep this in mind. True freshman kicker Blake Erickson's longest field goal of the year, only 32 yards. And this will be a 47 yarder from this, this position, so they need to get a few more yards. Play clock down to two. And the whistles come in. And a timeout taken with a play clock at two. Now you waste a lot of time here. So you look at. Buddy Pugh saying, I didn't like what we were doing there. We just didn't seem to have the right body language. So he called the timeout, used one of their three timeouts. You look at the game here today, Coach, and it has really been a story of turnovers in this contest. There was one there by the tight end, Jordan. After a great drive by App State. And then the pickoff here by Legree, by the way, his 10th interception of the year. And then Bad interception thrown here by Edwards. Trying to throw it out of bounds, it slipped out of his hand and was thrown up for grabs, picked off by Hamlet. And then you look at the touchdowns. Certainly the favorite target of Long has been Darby today. And speaking of tight ends, Jordan with a nice catch in the back of the end zone. 
Darby with his second touchdown grab of the day. And then a beautiful play here to Hillary. Dances into the end zone. Now back to live action with 28 seconds remaining on the reverse. DeBose. Boy, was App State ready for that. Now very well played now using their timeout now. So I think they'll have one left. They need to get a little more yardage I think to have a field goal opportunity. I think they need at least 10 more yards. I mean and to really give their kicker a legitimate shot. Well in reality to win this football game you need touchdowns too. And I know that's uh, that's uh, uh, I guess coach speak but uh, this this app state offense is too good. You can't beat them on field goals to beat them. You have to score touchdowns especially when you're on the road. Jerry Moore I'm sure he's going to have a nice chat with his team in that locker room. 17 14 his team on top but by only a field goal right now. They kind of shot themselves in the foot with a fumble and two interceptions coming up the half. It is rivalry week and uh, Tennessee does find their man. They have hired their new coach. Tell you more about that and uh, talk about rivalry. How about that Bedlam series between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. I've been involved with that one a little both bit. Both ways. Yeah, both and ways. You were on exactly both sidelines. Right. Won some and lost some. It's a, that's a <laughs> that's a fun game. It's, it's a lot more fun when you win, obviously. Uh, yeah, oh, sure. Second and twelve, long. Across the middle, Debose. Did he hang on? We got the sign. Finally, they're saying yes, he did hang on. Boy, it took a long time for the officials to come in, and now another official comes in to wave it off. Everybody stood out there for the longest time and then finally they were going to mark the ball down and then they came in the umpire came in and said incomplete. As an official you have to make a decision don't delay and don't stand around and look at one another go in and make the call whether it be right or wrong you got to make the call. Well, let's see if they got it right again there is no instant replay and yeah that's a good call I mean good call it, that's a good call it is incomplete. Well, again, the, the one official, the bike judge, is, is, is blocked off and I think uh, could not see the play. But again, it's a good overrule. Again, get it right. And uh, they've got that one right. So it stops the clock with 12 seconds remaining in the half. One, and it's a third and 12. With one timeout left. Long, under pressure, throws it out of bounds. That stops the clock with five seconds to go and a fourth down. And I don't know if they're going to bring their kicker out or not. Again, Erickson, a freshman kicker, his longest of the year, 32 yards. So if they tried one from here, coach, it's going to be in the 50 yard neighborhood. That's going to be 49 yard or at least. So yep. that'd be, uh, be a tough call. I don't think he has that kind of leg. And they're going to go for it here on this fourth down. Well, I think. Uh, to take a crack at the end zone with five seconds yeah. to go. You're not going to be able to run a play and then you just got to throw one into the end zone. Yeah, I think you got one. I think you got one play left. So now they got to take the time out because the play clock was almost down to zero. So they got the timeout before the play clock ran out their last time out of the half. And Buddy Pugh telling his quarterback long to settle down. I think he does need to settle down. Lost their poise a little bit here, and they've got uh, they're they're in great shape. They're still in this football game. Let's don't uh, let's don't lose your poise. Hey, stay the course. And you're right. They need to go to the end zone. They're not going to be able to throw a pass, complete it, and uh, get the ball spiked or out of bounds to uh, to uh, get a shorter field goal opportunity. Talked about kind of losing his composure a little bit. He's just one for his last eight. He was really doing great on the day. He was in his first 10 passes, he was seven of 10, but just one for his last eight. Long throws it into the end zone and incomplete. He had a receiver, Philip Morris, breaking free. 
but Tanya was really putting some pressure on it, and he had to get rid of the ball. I think it's a pretty good call because the sprint away, he would have had time. I think he had opportunity on that play, that play because they had the, the Hail Mary set up to his left. He sprinted to the left and threw back to the right side of the field. Good game. Still anybody's game here in Boone, North Carolina, Appalachian State. The quest continues. Can they win four straight national championships? Right now, they're only leading by a field goal at the half. Welcome into the You're watching the NCAA Division I Football Championship presented on ESPNU by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And here we are getting ready to start the third quarter. Appalachian State have won three straight national titles leading by just a field goal. Hi, everybody. Dave Armstrong along with the coach, Larry Coker. Coach, Appalachian State really kind of letting South Carolina State hang around with those three turnovers in the first half. Nobody said it was going to be easy. These things are hard. You don't just walk into national championships, and they've got their hands full. It's a good football game, and they're playing a good football team. Well, they certainly are, but those three turnovers so uncharacteristic for the Mountaineers. Two interceptions, too, by Edwards. Now, we did see some heroics by both quarterbacks in the first half with four touchdown passes. A couple of strikes to the tight end for South Carolina State. Catch there in the end zone by Ben Jordan. This was a carbon copy of the first touchdown, long to Darby. And then a great play here by Coco Hillary after the catch. Well, some good football. Both these teams are making some big plays. They've made some mistakes they don't typically make. I'm sure the coaches have corrected those things that they have. So Jerry Moore will see what adjustments he and the Mountaineers have made in that locker room, leading by a field goal, the opening kickoff by Vateris. Short kick to the 23-yard line, DeBose returns it up to the 35. So let's look at the numbers, Coach, from this first half and see what you distinguish again. Turnover is a very big part of the story. Well, I think that is the story. And you can see it, that, you know, Abstave has a lot of yardage, but they have a, a, a drive the length of the field and turn the football over in the red zone. And, I think, again, that's something in the second half that uh, I don't think you'll see Edwards uh, turning the ball over with the interceptions as we did in the first half. Well, the first one especially was just one he was trying to get rid of, and it slipped out of his hand, and he threw it up for grabs. Second one was a really good play by South Carolina State. Here comes Ford. Boy, he saw a hole. All of a sudden, he was going to try to bust outside. He saw a hole, and, man, went right to the hole. Well, really impressed with their zone scheme. They're running the wide zone play, and they're just trying to, to maintain and, and run the defense. The offensive line from South Carolina State is going to run the defense to the boundary, and any time that Ford sees a crease, he can attack that crease. He does a great job of that. Eight yards on that carry for Ford. Ford's only run the ball 14 times today, but he has 91 yards. And again, Ford, he's got the first down. Will Ford, uh, this time, excuse me, it's long, but look at Will Ford go. He, he almost hides behind the offensive line until he finds a crease, and then, and then away he goes. Again, I felt like the key to this game was uh, what can South Carolina State do running the football? And with Will Ford, they've done a great job of running the ball. Now, the second half, let's see if App State can shut down the running game of South Carolina State. Ford's out, play action, a fake to Jamison, and the pass will get minimal yards to DeBose because Love was right there with him. Really good, uh, good job by Love uh, playing the play because a little misdirection, but Love was right there. and. And uh, well schooled with the defense of App State. So a gain of only a couple. Makes it second and eight. Near midfield, opening drive, second half for the Bulldogs. Jamison, cross midfield, down to the 46. DJ Smith wrapped him up there. Smith quicker this year, the linebacker. A big game against Sanford earlier when he had 16 tackles. But Ford closing in on 100 yards on the day. 
Travel Jameson is listed as 200 pounds. He looks a lot bigger than that. Uh, of course, Ford is not a big back. Ford's uh, about 185 pounds, but uh, Jameson listed at 200 pounds looks much bigger. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if I was trying to tackle him, he'd look like he'd weigh 400 pounds. But <laughs> he's a pretty physical back. Third and a short three. They need to reach the 38-yard line. The pitch out, and it was a pitch behind Ford. And all of a sudden, coming out of nowhere was D.J. Smith. What a play by Smith. Well, I think uh, John Wiley, the defensive coordinator, will be proud of this because this is the first time they've seen the option today. Again, not a good pitch, but uh, D.J. Smith does an excellent job doing his option responsibilities. His responsibility was to take the pitch. He did it, tackled well, gave uh, Ford no chance to run the football. With the linebacker core for the Mountaineers, Coach, they're good. They are very good. Good punt here by Hare. And taken inside the 10 yard line. And out goes B.J. Frazier up to the 25. Marshall McFadden forced him out there. So App State goes on the attack for the first time when we return. The Jaguars take on the Texans at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football. What is he doing? Said something about not driving through Texas without getting a shot of a App State's defense all of a sudden really getting tough against South Carolina State and they are able to force the punt. So Armani Edwards brings the Mountaineers on the attack. Starts with a completed pass to Corman who goes up the sideline up to the 41 yard line. Hamlin forced him out there. Armani Edwards coached a great first half for him. Well, he did have the two interceptions which is unusual for him. In fact, he had gone 176 passes without throwing an interception. Two today. Well, really a good call by the uh, by the uh, App State offense. They had South Carolina State had the blitz on. They really attacked right where the blitz was. They blocked the perimeter well and made a, certainly a, a very good uh, first down game. Edwards again throws another strike. This one to Quick, who goes across midfield down to the 46-yard line. I was talking to Edwards uh, again yesterday about he, he was asking how can I get better how can I improve and you know, again it's all about attitude he has the ability and I think the new style of play even in the National Football League of that mobile quarterback he can pass the football but he has the mobility I think he will bring great value to any any NFL team five incompletions today and two of those were interceptions now looking to run and hemmed in and a loss here it goes a sack for South Carolina State. Nice play by Keon Brooks. You look at Edwards, coach. I mean, at birth, he weighed only four pounds, 11 ounces. He was really tiny at birth. And the way he has developed as a quarterback here, I mean, just as a man, the very first flight he ever got on in his life was the game they played at the University of Michigan. Of course, they won that game behind Armani Edwards, who was unbelievable in that contest against the Wolverines. And then he throws this one away. Looks like there is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Back, back in the backfield, there's a flag. Holding call against the Bulldogs. I think it's a little bit of the beauty of uh, college football uh, opportunity for young men to, to see the country to, to move around and experience some different things that you normally would not get to experience. Holding defense number 10. While pass cross the line of scrimmage automatic first down. Seems like the big penalties have all been against the Bulldogs today. Well I think uh, they would agree with, they would agree with that. Uh, I think they have been against the Bulldogs, and uh, you know, usually those things balance out, and uh, and uh, we'll see if they do in the second half. They haven't thus far. Automatic first down to the 37-yard line goes Edwards and company. Four penalties against the Bulldogs, and it seems like all four of those have been really huge calls against them. And this one batted down at the line. We talked about Edwards taking that first flight, the University of Michigan, where. The Mountaineers stunned the college football world, stunned the Michigan Wolverines, and many call it still the greatest upset in college football history. I don't deny that. I, I used to coach at Ohio State. I've, I've seen Michigan a couple of times, and 
and uh, that's a great tradition. Of course, a very tough place to play for anybody. And and uh, just watching the game a year ago, the parts of the game, I was so impressed with App State's speed. They have so much speed, and you can sit on the field now. There's a reason they win those national championships, and they have outstanding speed on their football team. Second and ten. Here comes pressure. Edwards steps up and then throws a strike. Again, turned a negative play into a positive one as he's able to get the ball up to B.J. Frazier, Wilkerson on the coverage. Let's go back to that game in Ann Arbor. Of course, the marching band comes marching out. Everybody thinking this is going to be a big celebration. Great start to the year for the Wolverines against this team from Boone, North Carolina. But Edwards had something to say about it. And then this block. A blocked field goal at the end of the game by Corey Lynch sealed the deal for the Mountaineers. Well, you think uh, Michigan's going to win it late on the field goal, the block, uh, game over, and really probably it's, uh, that's the way the score should be written. You saw Jerry Moore is so emotional after that, and you wonder how much money has Appalachian Washington State, State been able to raise as a result of that win. Well, I don't know if I was Jerry Moore, I'd be emotional too because uh, you yeah, can live okay. a long time and not have a win like that and sure there's such such a great win for this program and and how important that this university is to this area and they're not afraid of playing people i mean they got florida coming up virginia tech georgia they really tackle a very quality opponent each year if well, somebody doesn't like jerry moore the head football coach making that schedule i'll tell you <laughs> and they played lsu this year to start to start the year right. of course all these teams are going to play on the road they'll get a good payday they'll make money on these trips but but again those are tough uh, tough games to uh, to win and i'm sure if you're a team like an lsu of michigan last year of florida virginia tech when you see App State on your schedule, you're not thinking, well, that's an easy win. I mean, and your fans know, too, because these guys are on the map now as being very dangerous. Well, they're very dangerous. And, and you just look at uh, Joaquin Roman, Roman the, uh, the linebacker, the middle linebacker, defensive player of the year in, in, the, in the conference. He can play for anybody. Now, he's an inch shorter coming out of high school than some of these players, but he can play. That's what it means. be a five-yard penalty call. Looks like Brad Hardy, the tight end, jump. Try the snap. Ball start, number 72, offense, five yards, remains third down. A hardy jump, but so did Jonathan Bischke. So they both were guilty. A little bit of rain falling, kind of a rain-snow mixture here on the mountains. It's good. Uh, we talk about the seasons. I live in South Florida. I don't see much of the rain-snow mixture there. <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> no. Edwards throws it down the sideline. He's got it. And down at the one yard line goes Matt Klein. Wow. I can't believe this throw. This is such an unbelievable throw. Just uh, the ball is up and over the defender and just right in the arms of Klein. And just a tremendous throw. 35 yard pass play from Edwards to Klein. And a pretty good tackle by Terrence Allen to keep him out of the end zone. But, uh, you know, I thought he might have been in. But, uh, again, I think uh, if you had replay, that might be a touchdown. I was going to say because he really was riding on the back of Allen and mm -hmm. never really touched down. And again, there is no replay. So the call on the field stands. And it brings up a first and goal situation just outside the one. As we've seen today, the call on the field had been a little controversial. If the officials have been, have been pretty much right. We missed a play during the replay. Edwards doesn't miss this touchdown, his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. A little breathing room now for the Mountaineers. Now this is going to be a gut check for uh, South Carolina State because now they're behind, they're on the road. Now they're really going to have to uh, draw on their leadership and really get, to get themselves back in this game. This next offensive drive is going to be uh, be huge for uh, for South Carolina State. Of the day for Armani Edwards, 321 yards through the air with two touchdown passes. He also has 23 yards rushing, and the point after is good. So Armani Edwards does the trick himself, takes it in from the one. A 10-point lead now for the Mountaineers. Check it out. The N 
NCAA Division I Football Championship is brought to you by FreeCreditReport.com. Stay on top of your credit score and credit report at FreeCreditReport.com. With Larry Coker and our entire ESPNU crew, Dave Armstrong on the campus of Appalachian State, Boone, North Carolina. And Armani Edwards has now forged the Mountaineers in front by 10. Biggest lead for either team. DuBose has got it at the 20 and then stopped after a return of only nine. So good coverage on the play by the Mountaineers. And let's see, as you mentioned, Coach, gut check time for the Bulldogs. Down 10. The momentum seems to be on the side of the Mountaineers. And we'll see if South Carolina State can make a statement here starting at their own 28-yard line. That's well, something you answer if you're South Carolina State in the, in the back of your mind. Do you really want to play next week? Do you really want to, to practice next week? You've had a great year. I think South Carolina, they're not going to quit. They're going to finish this thing out. But this is really, it is. It's gut check time for, for South Carolina State. Long, remember, started hot. Seven for his first ten. It's been a little colder of late. And now they're really zoning in on Will Ford. Jacques Roman got into the backfield. And it's a loss of a couple. I think you'd like to see App State make this a one-dimensional game, making making the game have to go to uh, Malcolm Long to win the football game and really somewhat take Will Ford out of it. And they did it on this running play. And a nice job again. Uh, Roman's uh, an outstanding middle linebacker and makes an outstanding play there. Here Banks was also in on the stop. Long across the middle throws a strike to his tight end Darby. And Darby's got a first down at the 39 yard line. Leonard Love with a hit there. Darby came off limping a little bit. He's uh, he's a Miami player and from a Miami High School and uh, sure uh, I'm certain some of the Florida schools uh, hate to see him get away because he's a very impressive looking uh, tight end. He really is. Runs good routes. He catches very, the ball. He does. He's very athletic and uh, he runs excellent routes. He looks like a wide receiver that, that can play tight end. So a fresh set of downs. Now the give is to Jamison and he spins forward to the 42 yard line. Don't forget. This afternoon, ESPNU delivering more college football. It's a great interstate rivalry, North Carolina and Duke. College football presented by Allstate on the U and ESPNU HD today at 3.30 Eastern. Second down, eight yards to go for Malcolm Long. Long today, 10 for 21. With an interception and two touchdown passes, 126 yards through the air. Throws one out in a flat too far for Will Ford incomplete. Well they'd like to have that back because he was wide open It's a good decision. And had Ford made that catch he had a lot of room to run in the, in the left flat. So now third and eight. Well if they're forced to punt again. It's going to be tough on them because App State if they come down and score. You know, all of a sudden you're really up against it. So this is a big third down play even though Lots of time left in this game. You're, you're right. And I think, uh, as you see, App State, App State is so good on offense, so you don't want to give them the football. Long across the middle, almost had it picked off. DuBose wanting a flag and finally gets one. Well, I'm not sure it's a good call or bad call, but I don't like the timing of the call. Go ahead and make the call. You know, you wait, you wait, you wait, and then make the call. It makes it look like when you wait that long, like you were talked into it. Exactly right. I think DeBose did a good job. He, he taught me into it. I, 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 believe, I believed him. So I think really, uh, again, make the call. Pass interference, defense. Number 28, 15-yard foul, and an automatic first down. And again, because the flag came so late, let's watch it again. They did get tangled up. There's no question about that. But I'm not sure if that's interference. It looked like just two players in the area going for the ball. Well, I think rule-wise, when the players get unintentionally tangled up, that's not a foul. Right. And uh, I think probably uh, that might have been a bad call by the official. 
Again, the timing of the call made it, made it look bad. And, and when DeBose was so demonstrative with, that's got to be a flag, got to be a flag, and at least two or three seconds after that, the flag came in. Now Jamison runs around the right side, big hole, another flag yeah. comes in. He goes down at the 30. This could be a hold. Well, I'm sure it is going to be a hold, and, and uh, yeah, I'm sure the South Carolina, Carolina State uh, coaches don't like that call. Right now, I think Buddy Pugh is going, that's make good. Well, I'm sure he feels that right. way. Buddy Pugh, this is his school. He, he played there, and that's Holy his hometown. 77 offense, 10 yards from the previous line of scrimmage. Replay first down. And the officials all tell you there's no such thing as a make good call. Well, but those of us who watch sports and those of you who coach sports, you probably would disagree with what well, they said. Well, they're, they're not uh, cyborgs. They're uh, they're human beings, and uh, they're <laughs> going they're going to make calls, and sometimes emotions enter into it. Uh, you know, Buddy Pugh's done a great job at South Carolina State. Uh, I know he's the second winningest coach in South Carolina State history, only only behind uh, uh, Willie Jeffries, mm -hmm. coach that uh, used to be at Wichita State. Uh, mm -hmm. Had a great career there, and of course the winningest coach. I think Coach Jeffries is retired now, and. I was at Tulsa. I got a chance to play against some of his, uh, or coach against some of his fine Wichita, Wichita State teams. Remember Outstanding his quarterback, coach. Prince McJunkin? He was really a good quarterback for him with yeah, the Shockers. Yeah, he's, uh, the style of play now, Prince McJunkin should have still been playing. He's a phenomenal athlete and quarterback. The screen pass out to Ford. Boy, good open field tackle by Ganey. I like the call. I like the screen pass, but uh, again, uh, really a good open field tackle by Ganey, as you said. It uh, looked like it was going to be a big play, but again, he really covered up a lot of ground. The ball was thrown a little bit off target, made Ford have to turn and bobble the ball a little bit, and really didn't get blocked on the perimeter as well as the uh, South Carolina State offensive line would like to have blocked it. Well, it's second and forever, second and 19 facing the Bulldogs. We need to pick up about half of this. That's looked like the play call to DeBose. He was wide open. I mean, they left him uncovered, and he takes it down to the 36, almost got it all. A really nice play call there and good execution. And uh, I think you're right. They didn't need to pick it all up, but it uh, must have been a, a mistake in the defense here because he was so wide open. Again, a good adjustment by DeBose. He's a good receiver. Again, threw the, threw the back shoulder back, got the hands around, and made the catch on the ball that's thrown a little bit behind DeBose. Definitely third and doable now, third and three. Well, they're in two down territory now, I think, or four down territory. They'll have two, two opportunities to make this, I believe, unless they have a negative play. Ford tangled up. He ran into his own man. He was trying to get around Johnny Colbreth, the left tackle, and he was hit by Anthony Williams. I like what you're seeing now is the, the stretch play, the wide zone play and short yardage. You're getting a lot of penetration out of the App State uh, defensive front. They're kind of uh, they're calling the play. They know the play that's going to be run, so they really penetrate and get upfield. And there's no chance on the zone if you you allow penetration. So earlier in the game, when they were spreading it out, the point of attack was really closer to the line of scrimmage. Now it's two or three yards in the backfield. It makes a big uh, big difference. Yep. You can't run the zone play and allow a penetration. And they are going to go for it on this fourth and six. And DeBose can't hang on. The pass was in his hands and then out again. Fletcher really putting some pressure on. It would have been a good catch, but, uh, but a tough catch. And a, a catch I'm sure DeBose would like to have. And, and uh, normally he's going to make this catch, from what I've seen. Well, there came the hit by Fletcher. It's right there. He just, yeah, he just juggles the football. He doesn't get it put away. And a good, again, a good hit by Fletcher. And, and a, and a good throw. It's, it's a tough catch, but uh, again, it's a play that Dustin DeBose is normally going to make. Mm -hmm. And that was in his hands. That's one that DeBose would even tell you, I should have had that, and that would have been enough for the first down. Instead, they turn it over on downs, and here comes Edwards. Edwards throws it into traffic, a dangerous throw, and almost picked off by Bush. You know, good pressure there by, again, the front of uh, South Carolina State, and uh, a nice job there. Putting pressure on uh, on Edwards and uh, looked like uh, to me, uh, you know, 87 Cedric Lloyd was uh, on top of him as well as Ferguson. Edwards didn't play last week against Western Carolina. First time that he hadn't started in 20 straight mm -hmm. games. And I'm not saying there's rust on Edwards, but 
he doesn't seem to be as in sync. I mean, that was almost the third pick of the day. Yeah, I, th I think that's an ill-advised throw. You don't need to throw interceptions now. Your game, you, you're, you're in control of the game now. Just go win the football game. Right. Don't give the game away. Goes as an incomplete pass, second and ten. And the play clock down to one. Did they get it off in time? Away game. Offense. Number 14. Five yards. Remain second down. You know, a little emotion there with uh, Xavier Littleberry. He's uh, getting pretty fired up, pretty emotional about this uh, final series here. Well, if he's Littleberry at 6'6", 235, <laughs> I'd hate to see Big Berry. Columbus, Ohio native. You see the penalties now. And again, though, even though there's only 15 yards difference in penalties. It seems like a lot more. It seems like the penalties have really hurt South Carolina State. There's a pass completed to the tight end Jordan. He brings it up to the 40 yard line close to the original line of scrimmage. I like what uh, Coach Moore is doing with the tight ends. He's really mixing those players in. And he has, I think, two really good players in Ben Jordan and Brad Hardy that uh, are involved in the game. And he really involves them in the fact he throws the ball to them. And also uh, works with them as blockers. I know Jeremy Shockey was a wide receiver, as I said, coming in in Miami, and he really wanted to improve as a blocker. He said, Coach, I know I can catch it. I've got to learn to block better. Ball was tipped at the line and then incomplete. Boy, almost coming up to get it was Tony White. Pass intended for Jordan, and again, tipped at the line of scrimmage. Well, if you're App State, a punt's not bad. A turnover in, in your own territory is bad. A punt's not bad. Cover the punt, play field position. You're two scores ahead. Again, you're getting some pressure on him, but uh, again, the ball is uh, forced in a, in a small area and a good break on the ball. So on to punt, Neil Young. Looks like he had a punt block on him. Phillips Adam, Phillip Adams waiting. And they've got the punt block. It's a bad snap, and the block punt here will give South Carolina State the ball at the 13-yard line. Well, it all started by the punter Young dropping the football, and then here came Richard. Normally, you get a punt block, you lose. And I'm not saying that uh, App State's going to lose, but this is something that the South Carolina State needed to give them the emotion. And really, they, uh, they have chances. It was a bobble snap. It was a good snap, but it's bobbled. And maybe the ball's a little bit wet. The rain's starting to come down a little bit harder. But again, those are things you got to make sure and have a dry ball on the field. You got to you got to get the football off. So a huge break here. It doesn't go as a turnover, but it could. Nice play by Donovan Richard. And he plays only on special teams. Now the give to Ford in for the score. William Ford scores the Bulldogs. Just like that. It's a different ball game. South Carolina State capitalizes on the block punt. On the next play, Ford goes in for the score. Well, what a huge turnaround. And you see the rain is falling down pretty heavily right now. But uh, this is exactly the momentum that South Carolina State needed. They're back in this football game. And, and uh, this, is, uh, this game's far from being over. We we're told that's the first time that App State coach has had a block punt since 2005. I don't think the block punt was the, the fault of the protection. I think no. it was just a muff snap. I was, the muff, muff, uh, feeling, feeling of the snap. It's a good snap. So the point after is good by Erickson. And Ford able to score the touchdown as he takes it right in, almost untouched. And just like that, we've got a ball game again, a three point contest. Well, this game has had a lot of twists and turns, and it just turned again. Appalachian State, they were up by 10, now up by just a field goal after a block punt. A very quick drive, just a one-play drive. And Will Ford, he takes it in for the score. So Buddy Pugh, even though he's getting wet, pretty happy as Ford takes it in on a 13-yard touchdown run. He's up to 97 yards on the day. I tell you, the rain's not nearly as cold when you're uh, when you're scoring touchdowns. <laughs> it's a little bit warmer. And now he's going to put a rain jacket on. Probably thinking about that thing. Well, you know what? Might have been good luck charm. Now this ball squirts and goes on into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And 
App State will start on their own 20 yard line. Now, what does Armani Edwards do to settle his team down and get him back on track? Well, I think he just has to play. I think he tried, as coaches say, you know, don't worry about the scoreboard. You've got to play one play at a time. And maybe that is coach speak, but it's actually the only play you can control is this play. Too many players like to look behind at what they did wrong or what was good uh, five plays ago or three games ago or look, who do we play next week? It's not next week, it's the next play. And the teams that do that really well tend, uh, tend to win. The 22 completions, a season high for him. And a straight run on the option, keeps the ball and takes it up to the 25 yard line. And now a little bit of, can you call it sun or is that just the lights coming out? I think a little bit of sun peeking through and the mist here in the mountains. They wouldn't call that sun in South Florida. They would call it stadium lights, but I don't know what you what they call here. But it's a little bit, a little bit of sun, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, little bit lighter. Let's put it that way. Right. And I think the light rain has subsided a little bit, hasn't it? You think it's just the lights? I, I do think there's a little break in the clouds <laughs> up there. Come on, work with me here. <laughs> <laughs> Second and four. The sun really hurts my eyes. I'm. <laughs> oh. Well, screen pass completed. And a huge play for Appalachian State. Going all the way down the sideline was Coco Hillary and forced out of bounds by Hamlin, or he's off to the races. I tell you, Coco Hillary has been very impressive today, and he has all year long, but but uh, just a nice concentration. There are a lot of bodies out there, and how does he get out of this? A good block on the perimeter, but. Uh, you can see him now. Watch him run. He is he is a, really a, a, an exciting football player for App State. 22 yard completion here, and Hillary today he has been electric. Hillary with five catches today for 94 yards. And a touchdown. Jackson goes in motion. And the quarterback draw. Edwards able to get about four yards on the play. Well, tonight on the U, more college football. And it's a good one. Vanderbilt taking on Wake Forest. College football primetime presented by City on ESPNU and ESPNU HD tonight at 7 Eastern. Those are two teams that have had some uh, very good uh, games this year and had some really mystery games that right. they've lost, but uh, two two really good programs and two really good coaches and, and uh, pretty good seasons for both teams. Maybe not what they'd hope to have, but uh, two pretty good teams. A gain of six, second and four. Edwards breaks the tackle, or does he? No. He does not get out of the grasp. And a good play here. Again, that's the guy that blocked the punt. So another nice play. Well, you hear a good, good pressure. That's Richard. I, I don't think uh, Edwards really, really senses Richard. Boy, what a great play he makes. And I thought Edwards was going to come out of it, but uh, really uh, couldn't, couldn't break the grasp of uh, Richard. Donovan Richard. Second sack today by South Carolina State and a big loss. Now it makes it third and 13. Here comes pressure from Richard again. They dump it off to Jackson. And he will not have the first down. Stopped near the original line of scrimmage right at midfield, and the punting unit has to come out. A really big stop by South Carolina State. Now, I really hate to admit it, but I think that is some sun breaking through. Um, I, when I'm wrong, I admit I'm wrong, but I think it is a little bit of sun. Good. I'm not going crazy after <laughs> all. Last time, Young had trouble hanging onto the ball, and it resulted in a block punt. Good hands this time, and a decent punt. Adams comes up, drops it, and it goes out of bounds, or that could have been an ugly turnover. Very fortunate play there by Adams. He's on the boundary, and the ball goes out of bounds. And of course, it stays with, uh, stays with South Carolina State. Well, let's look at the football championship bracket and starting in the bottom half with the number two seed Appalachian say that means they get to play at home as long as they keep winning right up until the championship game in Chattanooga on December 19th a game you can see on ESPN 2 HD and uh, the winner of this one will take on the winner of Richmond and Eastern Kentucky the number three seed Northern Iowa. 
Memphis. James Madison, the number one seed, they beat Appalachian State earlier this year. In a very, very good game, 35-32. DeBose breaks a tackle and gets some extra yards. I asked Jerry Moore about the playoffs, and uh, he's coming from Nebraska and, te and Texas Tech. He'd never been around the playoffs until he got to App State, and you know he really likes uh, likes the playoffs. But one point he made, I thought was pretty important, was the fact that if you win, you've got to be better the next week because you're playing probably a better team. And it's kind of interesting how that all falls. So you've got to continue to get better as the playoffs uh, go along. First of all, you got to win, and then get better throughout the week. Here to Jamison. Again, just stretching it out and looking for that crease. He's able to get it up to the 35 yard line. That'll be a first down. Move the chains. DJ Smith, along with Tanya, there to stop Jamison from a further game. And looks like could be the last play of this, the third quarter. So, App State they got a 10 point lead early on in this third quarter, but a block punt. That's why Buddy Pugh is clapping because his team, a big underdog in this contest, gets the second seeded Mountaineers playing in the Mountaineers' backyard. They're able to come back after that block punt, get the touchdown from Ford. And we go into the fourth quarter in a game up for grabs in the first round. We welcome you back to Boone, North Carolina and Appalachian State trying to make it four straight but facing a tough opponent here in the first round in South Carolina State. Scores by quarters will give you the indication that this one is still very much up for grabs. South Carolina State with the ball and a fresh set of downs. Pass across the middle is knocked away. Good play defensively as DJ Smith got in the way of Octavius Darby and good pressure coming as well from Fletcher. Really a good, uh, good uh, pressure coming in, but nice job sitting in there, standing in with Malcolm Long. And, uh, and I'm really impressed with Darby, uh, how uh, how well he runs his routes. And uh, yeah, he's difficult to cover in the, in the uh, open field. Coach, let's give credit where credit is due. That was Banks with the tip on the pass, not Smith. So great play by Pierre Banks. Now Ford hauled down after a gain of about five. He brings it up to the 40. The play there made by Fletcher. Well, the App State uh, crowds hauling, yelling for defense, and uh, they need to stop here. Got Philip Morris out here. Philip Morris, number 21, is getting a lot of man-to-man -man press coverage, and, and I'm surprised he don't uh, go at. Uh, Cortez Gilbert a little bit. Uh, he's off playing off now, but normally he's been playing a lot of press man. Saw Ford over 100 yards. Pass play here. Incomplete. Would have been shy of the first down marker anyway. That time it was DJ Smith on the coverage on DeBose. I'm very impressed with this linebacker core from, from App State. And again, they cover well, they tackle well, and really nice job protection, but really no place to go. And you're not going to uh, get past uh, DJ Smith on that particular underneath route. So a good sequence there for the Mountaineers to start the fourth quarter. And they force the Bulldogs to punt it away. Hare, he's been great at punting the ball today. And another pretty good one. Fair catch signaled for and made. So App State comes on the attack, leading by a field goal. 14.05 remaining. Okay, I'm going to go get the Christmas tree and the lights. It's time to get your home ready for the holiday. It's the NCAA Division I Championship first round action presented on the U by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Appalachian State and Armani Edwards back in business. And what a day Edwards has had. Well, he's just uh, phenomenal. I just uh, look forward to seeing him play today. And he hasn't disappointed anybody. Again, I'm really impressed with his accuracy. He, he obviously has great feet, but tremendous accuracy. But also, he has a tremendously quick release. He has really a knack of getting the ball, making everything catchable. And of course, he can run the ball when the pass isn't fair. Again, he has some favorite targets, but he spreads the ball around pretty well. Coker Hillary there doing a great job, and also using Ben Jordan, the tight end. Uh, 
I think uh, I think uh, Amani Edwards is as good as advertised. Look at that, 354 yards through the air and another 26 on the ground. He has thrown to 10 different receivers today. And Hillary, by the way, you mentioned him. He has a career high 94 yards. And we still have a quarter to play. <laughs> <laughs> on the option, Edwards keeps it and is slammed down at the 31. Let's get you another update on that game going on in Georgia. And it's been of four snaps. Georgia Tech ties the game, then takes the lead. They had a touchdown, two-point conversion, recovered a fumble, and then that, the touchdown. Georgia Tech with the lead. How about that? Georgia Tech trying to win that game for the first time in a long time. We were so impressed with them earlier, especially their defense. That front four defensively, I was just amazed at how good the Ramblin' Wreck were up front. We talk about their offense, but their defense is special. A bad pass that time from Edwards. Well, you know, he never looked like when he was just standing there. He looked like flat-footed, didn't he? Well, it's my fault. I was talking about his accuracy, and then, yeah. and then he throws the bad pass. But you know, you won't see many of those. I think the ball might have slipped out of his hands. And a little bit of advice. I, I thought maybe he saw a defender was breaking up, and he might have felt like he was going to intercept the football. But back to the Georgia Georgia Tech offense. Uh, yeah, a lot of said about their offense and, and the flex bone, the the, the, the option. Attack, but uh, their defense is what's really impressive to me. They and, and they've gotten so much better offensively, understanding Paul Johnson's offense. Third and four. App State just two for seven on third down today. Make it two for eight. Incomplete pass intended for Hillary, and incomplete. Very good stop for South Carolina State. Again, I think the ball a little bit wet, might have slipped through Hillary's hands, but uh, you know you've got to make those plays. Again, pretty good job there by Edwards throwing the ball away from the defender. And again, uh, it's one that uh, Hillary's normally going to make. Coco Hillary doesn't drop many like that. Neil Young on to punt. Good punt this time. Adams drops the ball. It's loose. And it looks like South Carolina State has recovered it. LaQuinn Ellerby falling on the ball for the Bulldogs. Boy, almost a huge turnover there for Phillip Adams, but Ellerby comes back to save the day for South Carolina State. They're gonna have the ball when we come back. I got $583 in cashforgold.com. With gold, silver, and platinum at their highest from the hills of Appalachian State. South Carolina State in this game with the ball, trailing by just a field goal, and they're lucky to have the ball right now. Enough there. And fortunately for them, Coach LaQuinn Ellerby falling on that ball. Well, that's a very fortunate play. Again, I think the, the wet ball, wet turf's having a little bit of a factor now. It's an artificial surface. But the ball, uh, without question, is a little bit, uh, a little bit slippery. So starting at their own 27-yard line. But it's slippery for both teams, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Conditions are always the same for both. Who can gut it out here? Cold, dark day in Boone. Will Ford hit down as he tried to cross the line. Pierre Banks again. You can bank on him. I'll tell you, he's, a, as you mentioned, a great student, a 3.91 GPA. He's already a grad student. Once he registered as a freshman, he thought, well, I'm not going to take the easy route and become a five-year guy. If I'm going to be here five years, I'm going to get my master's degree, and he will by the end of this semester. Well, that's what's very impressive. And, and again, going to the Dratty Award is a, is a very prestigious award. Pass is completed. And let's complete a pass to Lowell Galindo back home in the studio. App State not the only seeded team in the FCS championship getting a test. This is number four Montana and Texas State getting Bradley George to Cameron Luke putting them up 10 nothing in the first quarter. A big lead for Texas State against Montana 10 to nothing. Sort of a surprise there. Well, third down and six. And over the head of DeBose. That pass just airmailed DeBose and incomplete. 
Well, a good play call. He was uh, set up for the first down, but just a, just a poor throw by, by Malcolm Long. You see the number one seed, James Madison. They earned that right by beating Appalachian State earlier this year. Appalachian State, of course, going for their fourth straight championship title. That is unbelievable. Now, Northern Iowa, that was one of the teams that Appalachian State beat along the way. They play Maine today. They're the number three seed, and number four is Montana, and they're trailing. Low punt. And this one will go out of bounds at the 25 yard line. So you look at the top half of the bracket for the Division I football championship. And James Madison, of course, the number one seed. They take on Wofford today. They'll meet the winner of Villanova Colgate. Montana getting quite a challenge from Texas State today. Texas State with that early 10 to nothing lead. And then Weber State against Cal Poly. You know, Cal Poly uh, took uh, Wisconsin to the, to the brink and the loss in overtime uh, a week or so ago to Wisconsin. So really a good football team, Cal Poly. These guys, they have good football players and they play good football. Well, we've just been told that Villanova, a 41 to seven lead in their game. Another incomplete pass thrown here by Armani Edwards. Pass intended for T.J. Corman. Now the blitz coming off the edge, it really distracted Armani Edwards and uh, it, was, uh, it was probably a poor throw. Sure, Edwards in the back of his mind is thinking the way the defense is starting to play now. Hmm. If I could just get one more score for us, one more touchdown, that might do it. I think that's a good analysis. If they don't make a mistake in, in the kicking game like they did earlier, but I think that, that one more score would be pretty uh, pretty tough to overcome. We'll try to run it here and then hemmed in for a loss. I think that was a broken play. I don't think that was designed. I think it was supposed to be the option, and uh, I think the uh, pitch man went uh, the wrong direction. You know, so I think Jerry I think Moore is like, what was that play called? <laughs> now facing a third and 12. <laughs> State got the ball to start the second half after the first series by South Carolina State. They took it right down the field for a touchdown, and we've seen nothing since. From App State. Now rolling out, Edwards fires it, completes to Corman. Fighting for the first down, he's got it. Wow, what a play. Was that just like you draw it up, Dave? Just like it. Just like you draw it up. That's that's athleticism, that's genetics, that's making a play when there is no play. It's a good play by both Edwards and Corman. Well, good job by Corman after the after the catch because he was well short of the first down and Biggest tackle, it's going to be fourth down. That's quite an ability to throw that accurately on the run on like the that. Move. And again, Corman does a nice job of really uh, turning it up and make, again, make something out of nothing to make the extra effort for the first down. Yeah, he was stopped about five yards shy. Now, perfect strike back in rhythm again. This one to quick, right to midfield. I think you said it all. I think you said back in rhythm. And I think that's the thing that, that I think App State needs to do is get back to what they do, stay in rhythm. Throw the curls, throw the stuff that uh, easy, easy things, and, and make the, the catchable throws. And here's a perfect, sh perfect shot by by Edwards. And then quickly on the offense, a hurry up. They run a play to Welton, and he gains nine yards. And change the rhythm a little bit. That's a, that's a good job by Jerry Moore and the uh, App State offensive coaches. Well, they're almost getting lulled into sleep yeah. there for a while. So he says, "Let's go to a hurry up." Seems to be successful. Now Edwards lost one out. This one to Welton. He's got room to run. Welton trying to bust outside. Good tackle on the outside by Adams. But a great gain by Welton as he takes the ball all the way down inside the 20. They're in the red zone. Well, that shows you a little bit about the awareness of Amani Edwards because really that was not a design receiver at all. It was the last resort and just a nice little dump off and don't take a negative play. You get the ball in the hands of an eligible receiver. You do that. Good things happen, and you usually win. They give here to Jackson. He runs hard. All of a sudden, there's all kinds of holes opening for the Mountaineers. Edwards today, coach. He has had a career day. 398 yards through the air. The 27 completions, also a career high. 
Well, he's there's reason he's their team captain. He's their leader. The pitch out to the outside to Klein. He's got enough for the first down. He's tackled inside the 15, tackled at the 13. Good play there by Terrence Allen and Phillip Adams. Well, red zone offense for App State. There's their second in the nation. 92% of the time in the red zone, they score points, and 80% 80, 80 of the time they score touchdowns. So they're tough in the red zone. First down at the 13. Broken tackle at the line of scrimmage by Jackson. Close to the goal line, stopped at the one. You gotta love a kid like Josh Jackson. He's a walk-on and they gave him a game ball for his performance earlier this year against Georgia Southern. He might deserve a game ball on this run. Breaks the tackle here. Again, really attacks the goal line and, and puts a App State in position to first and goal from the one. Give you an idea, they've given out four or five game balls in 20 years that Jerry Moore has been the coach here, and they gave him one <laughs> after that game against Georgia Southern. So I'd say that's an honor. And a stop here against Jackson in the backfield, so he might have lost a half a yard there. You think about that game balls that only that many game balls yeah. of all the games they've won in the national championships and that's very few game balls that says a lot if you get one. It's a kid who's had to fight through the economics of being a walk on mm -hmm. and not being on scholarship. Edwards he has stopped. So it brings up third and goal they can't penetrate that defensive front four of the Bulldogs. James Simmons stood his ground. Well, one thing they are doing, they are using a lot of time, and, and uh, again, there's a lot of time left, but again, using a lot of time to score. I think, I think here, you possibly look for the option from uh, from Edwards. I don't know that you want to throw the ball here because it is a little bit tight, but uh, with him, you have a lot of options. But I see the option with him. To throw it into the end zone, that looked easy. Brian Quick. That's just like I call it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one option anyway. Well, again, how accurate the throw. Nice, uh, nice quick release, nice accurate throw. And Quick is such a sure handed player. Again, a former basketball player that now is a football player and had a, had a great career here at App State. Once he got the inside position, it was all over. Well, he has good size. He has great height and has good size. He has one of the guys that blocked the field goal against Michigan last year and, and very, very athletic. They had two blocks against the Wolverines, the one at the end of the game we showed you earlier, and then one by Quick. But a touchdown here. A little more breathing room again for the Mountaineers. Up by 10, 31-21 over South Carolina State. All right, sports fans, it's time to find Geico's number one fan. Tonight's winner will receive Geico T-shirts, hats, and an upgrade to courtside seats, and could star in a real Geico commercial. Let's see who it's going to be. It looks like You're watching the NCAA Division I Football Championship presented on ESPNU by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And App State, again, going for their fourth straight national title. Now with a 10-point lead. They go 12 plays, eat up 4 minutes, 26 seconds on the clock. And Edwards, the two-yard touchdown pass to Quick. Quick's a sure-handed guy. He's, he's a good go-to guy because he has excellent so size and, and tremendous hands. And, uh, again, that's one of the reasons that uh, App State is so good in the red zone because Amani Edwards is so accurate with uh, throwing the ball as well as their ability to run the football. The Terrace with a kick. And it backs DeBose up inside the 10. DeBose running toward the far sideline and is hit down at the 20-yard line by Riddle. You look at the teams that have won three straight national titles. Probably win a lot of bets in saying Minnesota and Army in Division One. You see Appalachian State in Division One, 2005 through seven. Augustana, by the way, they won four straight. So that's what Appalachian State is chasing right now in Division Three. Augustana won four straight in the 80s. I think Jerry Moore needs to bottle that and, and sell it because the ability to, again to keep the focus of this team. Yep. And bring on young players to, to live on to, to live this tradition. It's pretty special. App State trying to string it out. Now the ball comes loose, and App State's got it. 
poked out as Will Ford was going down. And it looks like Bennett was the guy to poke it out, and Jacques Roman was the one to fall on it. Well, Jacques Roman's an undersized linebacker, but an outstanding linebacker. And, and the tackles he makes and the plays he makes, being one of the captains, he's, he's for sure one of the leaders of this football team. Ball comes loose right there. Fletcher got in there, and then, boy, Johnny on the spot, Jock Roman to fall on that football. So Fletcher was there to pop that ball just before Will Ford touched the ground. Edwards, big hole on the right side. Edwards leans forward inside the 20, down to the 18. It's just a power sweep for the quarterback. It's the old, it's, people have run this offense, but the quarterback is so difficult to, def to defend, as you see in Florida with Tim Tebow and, and now here with uh, Amani Edwards. You see the good blocking out, out front, really a, a great job there with uh, Kilgore, the offensive right guard, pulling out front and blocking the corner. Josh Jackson running through the hole on the right side, takes it down to the 12-yard line. Again, if Appalachian State hangs on here, they look like they're in good shape now with under six and a half minutes to go. Up by 10 already and driving for yet another score. If they hang on here, they would face the winner of Richmond or Eastern Kentucky. I'd like to see that game. I'd buy a ticket. Yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. And they will get that game here, is that correct? That's right, yep. They'll play at home until they go to Chattanooga for the championship. And they're tough at home, Coach. I don't know if you knew that or not, but they're pretty tough right here. Well, I know this. If I were uh, Miami or the, my old Miami team, or if I was Michigan, I wouldn't come here and play. No, I know, I'd no, make them come to my house and play. Yeah. Yeah. And even then they're tough. But 41-1 <laughs> and one at home since 2003 for Jerry Moore. They have won 12 straight playoff games. They're 9-0 in the playoffs at home. And they've won... 11 straight here at the rock. They don't lose at the rock. Well, maybe the smart water that I'm bringing up here. I don't know what it is, but uh, I guarantee you they win at home. So inside the 10 yard line on third and one. Edwards waited, 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 then tried to rifle a pass inside to Hillary, who wants a flag. No flag on the play, and it brings up fourth down. Again, he has plenty of time, but again, good coverage and finally gets pressure. And you can see here comes the pressure, and he just has to get rid of it and pretty good coverage. And looks like uh, Jerry Moore's going to go for the field goal. I didn't know whether he would go for it or go for the three, but. Uh, well, the 10 point lead, I'm sure he would have loved to have gotten up yet another score, a touchdown there, would have put the game away. I think it would have been uh, virtually all over with the touchdown. Field goal here still gives South Carolina State a chance, although there's a fake on the play, and I don't think he got the first down. Vateris on the fake. I think he stopped just shy of the first down marker. Well, that's really a good job by, by South Carolina State, by their special teams, because that's a tough play to stop. You can cover it, but again, it's kind of a blind pitch, and, and a, but look at the coverage there, and also Finally coming in, pursuing, making the tackle. Really an outstanding job by South Carolina State. Yeah, McFadden saved the day there. That could have been another score for the Mountaineers. So the Bulldogs will have it when we come back. Make a U-turn as soon as... The NCAA Division I Football Championship is presented on ESPNU by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. These folks picking up their Christmas tree. Freshly cut, ready to go into their home to decorate. And here comes South Carolina State. They need to move the length of the field, get a quick score, and then maybe an onside kick to get back in this one. Jacques Roman and Pierre Banks sandwiching Ford on the tackle there. It's, I think it's, there's a law here. You cannot have a fake Christmas tree in Boone, North Carolina. Awesome. It's all, they call it cut and carry, right? Cut and carry. Cut and carry. Yeah, short gain there on that pass play. You've got to give 
The Mountaineer defense, a lot of credit in the second half. Yeah, they've done a great job. Hit as he throws Malcolm Long. Pressure coming from Fletcher, and there is a flag on the play. Fletcher saying, no, nah, turn it down. We don't need we don't need the penalty. Because it's only half the distance. Yeah. Holding offense. Number 50. That penalty is declined. No, I think you're right. Brings the down. Up third down. Take the down, yeah. Take the down is, is more important than the uh, half the distance penalty. Right. I mean, it would only been a five-yard penalty back to the five, and it gives them a second down. Now it's third down and long, third and eight. And Buddy Pugh might be forced into calling four down territory, really. I mean, with this much time on the clock. I don't know if he'd have to punt or not. If he tough call, well, we'll find out. What is he going to do? And now a flag comes in on the coverage. Close coverage on Young. And we'll see who they call it on. It's going to be a pass interference. And Pass interference, defense. Number five, spot foul, automatic first down. Well, it's a huge break for the Bulldogs. Gilbert whistled for the infraction. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know if this is really a catchable ball, but ball's thrown and you can't, you really can't see the interference. Maybe it was, he was hit before the ball was thrown or as the ball was thrown, but it's hard to see. Really hard to see that. Gilbert, who, Turned down an offer from Cincinnati to come here to App State. He said when he came on campus for his visit, he just had a great feeling that this is where he was supposed to be and no regrets. He's been a great addition to that secondary, an all-new secondary for the Mountaineers this year. Well, it's been very impressive. They've had an all-new secondary to play as well as they have, but to be uh, the record they have and now in the first round of the playoffs in position to maybe go into the second round. The rule was, I mean, everybody, the, the train of thought was that this was the year to get App State. You know, this was the year they were sort of reloading or rebuilding. But, boy, here they are in position again. Long pass play here. Looks like we're going to have maybe a penalty. The field judge threw his hat down at the 35-yard line. It could be just that the guy was forced out of bounds. I think he marked where the uh, out of bounds was uh, forced. I think he was forced out. If you're forced out, you can come back in and make a play. And I think that's what the field judge ruled, that he was forced out. Now he's yeah. out of bounds there. That's where the hat came in. And that's not illegal contact downfield? No. No, not the ball has been thrown. It's just right. jockey for position. Thrown across to his tight end, Darby, fighting for some extra yards. Darby will have the first down. And he goes out of bounds at the 44. Well, he's still hanging in, and Darby's kind of been a, just kind of a go-to guy the entire day. He's been a guy you want to look for. How'd you feel about, you know, playing more of a zone coverage in situations like this? A lot of times we as fans, we watch it and we say, man, the team's just marching right down the field. So how do you play it as a coach? Well, they've got to score twice. So yeah. I think just make them go the hard way. Don't let them have a cheap score. So in other words, keep everything in front of you. Well, I, I think so. But it also depends on your philosophy. Some some teams are an attacking style of defense. If that's what you do, yeah. continue to attack. Okay. I think the, the thing is, look, keep all the plays in front of you. Don't let anybody get behind you and make them get four or five yards at a time, eat up a lot of clock. I mean, and try to keep them in bounds. That's, yeah. It's a four minute defense, is where, what they are now. Keep them, keep them in bounds. Here comes pressure, and the pass incomplete. Darby had it, and it went off his hand incomplete. And again, Fletcher coming from the outside. Well, again, good, good pressure by Fletcher, and, and I think that caused that pass to be, uh, to be incomplete because of Fletcher's pressure. Stops the clock with 3-11 and a third and five facing long. I think now for sure he, he's got two downs to yeah. make this five yards. Yeah, but 3-11 to go and down 10. They need a score here. Also keep this in mind that Erickson's longest field goal of the year, 32 yards. So you've got to get great field position. There goes Ford, hit down, shy of the first down marker. It's going to bring up a fourth and a long one. Pierre Banks and Jacques Roman in on yet another tackle. How many tackles do those guys have today? Yikes. I think you might want to consider using your timeouts if you're Buddy Pugh because you've got 
three timeouts left, and you might want to start using those. Banks has 10 tackles. DJ Smith, the leading tackler, with 16 today for App State. And there is the first down. Good play by Long as he rifles a pass into Darby. Again, Long needs to get his team to the line of scrimmage, get the play call. Time, time's such a factor now. Now they down the ball. 235 remaining, 234. They stop the clock, 234 remaining. There's two trains of thoughts on, on spiking the ball. They've done some studies on that. They found out you can actually call a play and run a play virtually as quickly as you can, getting the ball and spiking the football. So, you know, you've uh, you've somewhat wasted a down here, especially because you need two scores. Yep, makes it second and ten. Ball at the 41-yard line, and in and out of the hands again of Darby. I think he was very concerned about Roman coming across the middle. Well, if he wasn't, I was concerned for him because <laughs> I think Roman had, uh, had he was in his radar uh, screen. Believe me. Looked like the Roman army <laughs> coming at him. Oof. So third and ten. And again, they've got probably two downs to make this ten yards. Jacques Roman was, re was recruited by a lot of Division I teams, and some fellas a little bit too short, and those teams love to have him now. The same with Banks, huh? Knocked out. Boy, good play there by the aforementioned Banks. That was a completed pass, and then boom, knocked out. What a play as he knocked it right out of the hands of DeBose. And linebackers. Their linebackers are special. And, and uh, again, here's a nice throw, but what a, what a great job by, by Banks. You know he's a tough kid. There's, what, 17, 17 siblings in that family? He's got to be tough just for dinner. <laughs> That's the fourth time that Banks has broken up a pass in this game. Now he and he's uh, one of the leaders. And along with Edwards. Oh. Fourth down and air mailing his intended receiver and that's probably all she wrote for the Bulldogs today Again, Anthony Williams getting some pressure on long and they turn it over on downs now that's that should be uh, should about wrap this game up two scores and now let's see what uh, App State does with the football with their offense they can spread the ball out and they can still have the spread offense but still run the ball out of the spread still mm -hmm. run the option still run the quarterback We've got a lot of things that they can they can do to run the clock out and stay in bounds and keep the clock moving. Well, Edwards, you look at his numbers, career high in both completions and in yards today. He's thrown three touchdowns. Uncharacteristically for him, also two interceptions. That matches his season total. Edwards here will try to stay in bounds. Nice stiff arm to gain a couple of yards. The NCAA Division I football championship concludes on ESPN2 HD. That's December 19th in Chattanooga. Game coverage starts at 8 o'clock. For a preview of every NCAA National Championship, including that game, go to NCAA.com, the official online home, for all 88 NCAA championships. It's always a concern you see about Edwards running the ball, especially with the ball game under control. But uh, you thought you might see uh, DeAndre Presley, the young freshman quarterback, and he is an outstanding prospect. I think Jerry Moore and the offensive staff really like uh, the prospects of DeAndre DeAndre Presley, the freshman. Presley is very good in waiting in the wings, too, saying, you know, I get to work behind a guy that's probably a Heisman Trophy candidate. Big run here by Josh Jackson. Big I, hole in the middle. I like that call because Josh Jackson's a walk on, and you've got Amani Edwards is a, is a franchise player, so give the ball to your, your meat and potatoes guy, Josh Jackson. 17 yard gain there for Jackson. Gives him 52 yards on the day and eight carries. Well, apparently South Carolina State's not going to use their timeouts and let the clock run, which is, uh, I'm sure, fine with App State. Sure. They'll take as much time as they can off the play clock. You can just see Monty Edwards just looking over that play clock saying, well, let's not snap it until we have to. They finally do snap it and gain a few yards. So App State has survived a bit of a scare here today, Coach. They're going to move on, though, to the second round. Well, they do. And uh, South Carolina State uh, really ha can be proud of the effort they brought to the field. Uh, there's a reason they're undefeated in their league and in champions, and uh, you can see it today. They're a very good football team. App State, though, 
coming from behind in this contest on a couple of different occasions led by another great day by Armani Edwards our team captain and leader as Jackson takes it into the middle of the pile and that might be the last play of no timeouts are called that'll be the last play of this game so congratulations to Jerry Moore the quest continues and what do they call a timeout we called one now why? Uh, yeah, why? why? I mean, you haven't <laughs> used one yet. Now, why call it with 13 <laughs> seconds to go? I really don't understand this. You sat there and let the play clock run down, run down, run down. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to stop it with 18 5. seconds to go. And <laughs> even Jerry Moore is like, what, what's going on? All right, well, we'll run a couple more plays. with a run now 13 straight playoff wins for Jerry Moore and company that's an amazing streak yeah and especially here at home the, the, the winning streak he has here is just yeah. phenomenal 10 straight playoff games won at home there goes Jackson to the outside slips down look like he would have had the first down and bring up a fourth down timeout yep they're going to use another one and again the question comes to mind why well, the only reason I would think is if they wanted to substitute some younger players in, at least give them a, a few plays in this game, but apparently they're not doing that. And, uh, you know, the game's virtually over, and I, I think probably you'll see uh, App State to, to uh, take an E now and run it out. We're going to go ahead and project them the winner. I think the votes are in, Coach, so we're yeah. going to project them the winner well, here. You're the, yeah, you could have you could project Barack Obama the winner, too. You're, you're <laughs> a prognosticator. Uh, Richmond against an Eastern Kentucky today, and the winner of that one will face... Jerry Moore's Mountaineers. So fourth down play here. Just eat up as much time as you can. Throw it up into the end zone. And touchdown! Oh, what a play by Quick! He took that right away from Terrence Smith, who looked like he had an interception. Well, very impressed with Quick. What an adjustment on the football. You know, the good receivers can do that. And the other ones can catch, but to be able to adjust on the football using the hands and just to, you can see, uh, see Quick has made some super plays all year, but to the things you've seen today have been very impressive by Quick. Two touchdown grabs by Quick today. How about this one? I don't really know how this was designed. I don't know if he's just throwing the ball up in the air to take as much time as he could. And, Quick just goes and gets it. How about that? So for Edwards today, 433 yards, four touchdowns on the day. Look at the crowd reaction saying, hey, way to call the timeouts. Thanks. Give us another score. Well, I, I think in reality, I, I think let the clock run out. You've you played a great game for your South Carolina State and, and uh, you know, let the clock run out and, and go home. Well, penalty for a little extra celebrating against App State. Yeah, I don't think anybody can complain about that if you're App State. They probably like the celebration. So it makes it a long extra point. The terrace with the point after. And they yoked it. And it's no good. Buddy Pugh's Bulldogs came in to a very tough place to play. And Appalachian State turned the ball over a couple of times in that first half, but then Armani Edwards, he righted the ship, didn't he? Five touchdowns today, one on the ground, four through the air, 433 yards total in passing today. Well, he's, he's as good as advertised, and this, this is kind of a career day for him, but I've but, uh, been very impressed again with his accuracy, and also with the quickness of his release. So again, the question that he asked you, how can he improve? Well, I think that is a good question. The thing I told, told uh, Monty Edwards is, again, have the attitude, be, be, be a contributor. I think the NFL people, they want people with a great attitude and also have value. He has a lot of value in doing a lot of things. And one of those things, of course, is being a quarterback. 
and also you'll learn from some of the great players. I, you, you know, watch it. Watch it like the quarterback from West Virginia, Pat White. Uh, you, you watch the the the, uh, the stars of the NFL, like a Brett Favre. What's how's a Brett, Brett Favre play? All those all those great players learn from those great players. Ronnie Edwards staggering numbers again today. And they're celebrating in Boone one more time. They've done a lot of celebrating here over the last four years. Well, you, I don't think you ever get tired of it. I, I think uh, Jerry Moore, you won a championship and you start looking, can we win that next one? Can we recruit? And can we build our young players up and win that next one? And they say next year's team is going to be even better. Well, I think they're young. This is a yeah. team, as you said earlier, Dave, this is a team that should be uh, susceptible this year, but they're not. And a square kick taken right at midfield. Took one second off the clock, so one more play for the Bulldogs. Looks like a lopsided score now, but certainly App State knows, and so does South Carolina State, that this was a very close game up until the closing moments. Well, the block punt made it a close game. I, I think the game was starting to get out of hand in favor of App State, but they got the punt block. South Carolina State did, and it really kept them in the football game and allowed them to, to stay and have an opportunity to get back in it. First time in the playoffs for South Carolina State since back in the 80s. There's really good good high school football in North Carolina and South Carolina. There's a lot of good high school football here. There's a lot of good football teams in uh, the area. I think you look at uh, App State, though, record-wise and what they've done, they're, they're as, as good as any in the, in the state of North Carolina as far as uh, this, uh, this level. How does this prevent defense? And App State's got everybody about 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage and then a delay of game taken by South Carolina State. It's been a hard 15 seconds. <laughs> yes. We thought the game was over about five minutes ago. And a couple of timeouts by the Bulldogs and a touchdown by App State. Long, we'll just throw it up there. And pan it down, and that'll do it. So App State moves on to the second round. Jerry Moore's team, the quest is still very much alive. Well, it is very much alive. And again, as Jerry Moore said, this was a tough game today. And uh, the point being, we're going to have to be better next week. The team we're going to play will be better. We're, we're going to have to be better. So Jerry Moore's. Mountaineers survive a bit of a scare from the Bulldogs, pull away in the end. And Jerry Moore's team will move on into the second round of the playoffs. And again, they get to play at home again, where they are 10 and 0 in the playoffs. They have now gone 42 and 1 at home since 2003. Both things very impressive. You like to see this little show at the, in the middle of the field, shaking hands and. Patting on the back and those type of things. Very, very good sportsmanship by both teams. So once again, you see App State moving on to take on the winner of Richmond and Eastern Kentucky. And that'll be next week right here in Boone. Great tradition. Richmond and Eastern Kentucky. Wow, the FCS, what a great tradition of both of those teams. So App State winning here today. Once again, they pull away in the end. And they win this one going away for Jerry Moore as App State came out and put on quite a show once again, winning at 37-21. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's SportsCenter U. For more information, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Larry Coker and our entire crew here in Boone, Dave Armstrong saying so long. Now, let's go to Roll Galindo and SportsCenter U.